Hey there, Scare fans, and welcome to the continuation of Act 3 of our Tale of Terror and Damnation, The Lurking Silence. I am Tyler Elder Checkos Online, and I will be your keeper and master of the macabre for this tale. We are Vorpal Tales, and we play terrifying tales and awesome adventures every day of the week, all at 9 p.m. Eastern, except one. Our other terrifying tales are on Tuesdays, playing Scion, Masks of the Mythos, beginning this week, 9 p.m. on the Onyx Path channel. Kimchi's Grimdark Chronicles on Thursdays, playing Strange Aeons in the World of Grim Hollow by Ghostfire Gaming. And Saturdays, playing Deviant the Renegades in a story called The Radiation Birds. We also have awesome adventures on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Check our calendar out for more. You can find us on almost all social media platforms by looking up Warple Tales and by going to our website, warpletales.com. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, soon, your favorite podcast platforms. And uh, Discord, you can find the free link to join us and hang out on our website. Also, our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tales. Come check us out. Special thanks tonight to Astral Tabletop, who make the virtual tabletop we use for all of our games. To my brother at N8 Mid, for the custom character sheets we use in Astral that all of you can use, too, if you play cool Onyx games or Call of Cthulhu. Uh, and thanks to Chaosium, providing Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition. Musical recognition for this game goes to the Dark Somnium Music. Miu and Vivek Abhishek, all of which you can find on YouTube. Check them all out. Secrets of Carcosa, please tell the audience who you are and who your character is in this terrifying tale. Hey there, my name is Eric. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Marlon Reclusa, and this evening I will be playing Barnabas Shaw, the uh, uh, horror author. Uh, hey, my name is Rachel. You can find me at Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. I will be playing Genevieve, who has lost all of her sanity so this should be fun uh hello everybody uh, i am steve you can find me on the internet at voodoo arcade and tonight i will be playing aubrey dyer who has some of her sanity left but not much hey everybody i'm ever my pronouns are they them and you can find me all over the internet as changeling ever and tonight i will be playing dr Layla safir farouk and her pronouns are she, her. And last but not least, we also have R.L. Jared playing Joshua this evening. Who will be joining us shortly once his uh, obligatory marathon duties are over. So, wow, I know how that sounded. <laughs> once he's done taking pictures of his wife. Uh, not better, Tyler. No, it's definitely better. Trust me. So, first things first. Ever of a recap of last session, if you want, please. The big if. Just kidding. <laughs> the Lurking Horror Act 3 continues. Joshua is carried off out of our sight into the fog by the leather-winged demon, and we hear a deep scream, which is cut off with a tearing sound, followed by a sound like a bucket of water filled with mud chunks hitting the ground afterwards. The screams cease. In great angst, our group has an argument over whether or not to pursue Joshua and decides that it was likely his body was torn asunder due to the screams and sloshing splash. A leathery flying beast, either the same as before or a new one, we're unsure, demolishes the van and we take off towards the west of the island. Genevieve, to the best of her ability, guides us and we avoid running into various demimond creatures. Fortunately, the demimond returns us to normal fog world when we stop to take a break. Unfortunately, we get lost in the woods. Thankfully, Dr. Safir Farouk finds that she happened to grab her compass and put it in her purse, which helps immensely in finding their way. Miles later, as we approach the bog, a hideous thing creeps into view towards our party. Genevieve notices a beast that looks like a hideous skinned humanoid, crawling around on all fours, which Aubrey warns her is not, in fact, a puppy. With a large splash, Barnabas finds himself underwater in this swamp. Both Layla and Aubrey crawl over to help pull him free. While they're occupied, the fleshy beast takes the opportunity to attack Genevieve. A fight ensues, and after taking numerous blows, the thing runs off into the woods. We find we're on the edge of the dig site when Layla nearly falls into the excavation. Within the dig site, there's a strange church 
wherein we find strange symbols that have been eroded by time and lack of preservation and iconography of people genuflecting before a strange angel. Exploring further, we discover a hideously ancient, loathsome statue of gargantuan size that drives our entire group into near madness. Some into complete madness. Combating the urge to stay and the yearning to unearth the statue of a strange god that Genevieve begins to call Saint Michael. We then find that the crown and scepter we have heard of once before were kept in this evil church also, but are now gone, leaving only their empty storage case behind. Deep down, we all realize that these items are the key to our escape from the Demimon plagued island and head off in pursuit of the dastardly objects, our madness giving us the knowledge that the relics are still somewhere on this island. As we head off into the fog once again, the madness of the statue seeps deeper into each of us, unlocking eldritch powers buried deep within our psyches. Nicely done. Thank you. So, let's deal with the fun shit. We do Genevieve last because Genevieve has it the worst. All yeah. right. Let's start with Barnabas, who I think had it the least worst. Oh, wow. how's, your, how's your sanity looking, buddy? Um, 72. <laughs> How much did you lose total last session? Jeez, uh, like 15 points? No, uh, 21 points. <laughs> 21 points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So good. Alright, let's, uh... Term. We got a long-term insanity coming my way, I believe. Oh, yeah. Permanent. Permanent. Maybe two. We'll see how it goes. Stand by one moment. Mm, there's one. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're using a cool deck I have. Oh. To randomly mm. assign fun things, unless they just absolutely oh. can't be used to apply. <laughs> Ooh, Roll fun. a d50, please, Eric. Oh, that sounds fun. Okay, one second. A wild Jared appears. 22. 22, okay. One twenty-two. You permanently have hemophobia. This should be good. How do you spell that? Could you use it in a <laughs> sentence, please? Blood, blood <laughs> everywhere! Oh God! You have oh. a fear of that. That's the sentence, Stephen. You have a fear of blood. Seeing blood causes your heart rate and blood pressure to rise. Your mouth goes dry and you become dizzy. Oh, There's a lot of blood. An accident. Medical procedure. You're liable to become nauseated and possibly faint. You will most likely overreact to minor injuries affecting yourself and others, perhaps running away other than offering help. You will be reluctant to seek medical treatment, enter a disaster scene or a hospital where there is a risk of seeing blood. Great. Exposure to blood causes an overwhelming response, and all actions while in a phobic state other than fleeing from it or fighting are made with one penalty die. Hmm. Successful use of psychoanalysis allows you to temporarily reduce your stress so that you can handle the site or administer first aid. FYI, this is your main first aid character that just got this. I was just going to say, I think he has our Not highest first, first aid. aid skill. <laughs> Just prepare to use that psychoanalysis a lot there, uh, Doc. <laughs> Tyler, now that you've used it in a sentence, can I get the language of origin, please? <laughs> 
and you can see it in Discord, phobia. sir. Phobia. <laughs> oh, wow. Wonderful. The language of origin of any phobia is basically Latin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I think that's good enough for you. We don't need two. <laughs> Dr. Rook and uh, Aubrey, which of you had it worse? Tell the fellas your total loss at so I don't remember how much of it was last week, but I currently am down 49 sanity with a total of 30. Okay. Oh. Root Doc Rook. Oh boy. Tell us what your power is, and then tell us what your current sanity is, and then we'll know. Power is 70. Okay. Current is 63. Oh, wow. You came out pretty good. Right. So, yeah, Aubrey, you're next. Happen? Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Did you not record it at all? No, I don't I... remember how much you lost. Oh, I bet. No, those are luck points, not sanity points. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Count yourself lucky. Hmm. Actually, what's your mythos score? <laughs> mythos is five. Okay, were they, that's were they, why. Were they the only one that either didn't touch the statue? Or... I did not touch the statue. Right, that's why. That's That'll what I was about it. to say. They didn't get the big mythos hit. That'll do it. Yeah. Okay. So, Aubrey, give us a D50 roll. D fifty, you say. Thirty one. Thirty one. Eric is twenty two. <laughs> Mythomania. I can use that in a sentence for you real easy. <laughs> it wasn't me. You are compelled to lie and exaggerate to an abnormal extent. It is impossible for you to tell the truth, even if your life depends on it. <laughs> Lies act like armor. They That's shield amazing. you and protect you from harm. You may hide the truth in exaggeration while promoting your own self-interest. You spice things up with elaborate stories demonstrating how important you are. As your condition worsens, your web of lies grows. You must keep track of your lies, writing them down to help you remember them times of stress, your lies and exaggerations grow more wild and bizarre. When confronted about your lies, you grow anxious and suffer from a penalty die in all skill rolls until you're able to exit the scene or create new lies that are believable. <laughs> Does not count combat. I can alter the level of difficulty for certain skill rolls if necessary. Successful use of psychoanalysis allows you to temporarily ignore the mania in its most severe expense. So, allowing you to tell the truth, perhaps for a brief moment. Do you want that, and do you want two different ones? Two different ones? Yep. That was real bad, so I'll let you That's opt out. That's a really you get bad two. one. Oh, jeez. I mean, I'm being I would suck. Um, I mean, can I trade with Eric? That's up to Eric. Since he I would allow seem, that. Since he already seems to have this. I would <laughs> allow that. What am I trading for? No, no. Just... Mythomania for hemophobia. Refresh my memory, what's Mythomania? Mythomania is you have to lie all the time forever. <laughs> but it's really... <laughs> I mean, I already do that. It's kind of that's, redundant. Right, so. that's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Is I just give it to you. Well, um, let, let, me, let me show it to you, Eric. No, 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 no. I wasn't really going to trade. Like, I, I was just making... There you go. Eric already it wasn't has me. <laughs> it's a shaggy defense. Um, you are compelled to lie. <laughs> exactly, okay. Uh, jeez, I don't... I, sh, sh, uh... What do you guys think? The one go with the lie one. one. Go with go with the one. If you if you pick it up, you could say that it it it's Barnabas's uh, compulsive lying <laughs> rubbing off on you. All right, I'll take rubbing, it. Rubbing, I'll take it. See how it goes. This is gonna be very interesting. <laughs> okay. And ever make your roll. Yours may be modified because yours can't be horrendously bad. A feel left out here. Um, also. One I want to go crazy for years. It's kind of amazing. 
It's gonna share that with you on Discord. Oh my gosh. Forty-six. It wasn't me. <laughs> Forty-six. Is that a shot Cthulhu monster? Yes. I totally didn't do that. With the bow on his back. <laughs> Life. Uh, 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 that's been really <laughs> hard for your character, but you may be entertained. Long term violence used in a sentence. Did I do that? <laughs> wow. Ooh. Suddenly, you come to your senses and look around. Surrounding you is a scene of devastation. People lie on the floor groaning. Some are nursing injuries while others are dead. You're covered in blood. Some don't move at all. You realize you did it, but have no memory of it. You don't remember a thing, least of all while you instigated a spree of violence and destruction. You stare at the fear on the people's faces as you hear the sound of sirens approaching. Oh, my. The doctor's gone Hulk mode. <laughs> I feel like we should try again because your character is going to die if you punch everything. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Okay, one more roll. Let's see what we get. Five. That two? Wow, that's sad. Five. Five. Yeah. I went from one end of oh. the spectrum to the other. <laughs> Aminomania. Used in a sentence, we're all going to be eaten, but don't be so glum, look on the bright side. You <laughs> suffer from irrational cheerfulness. No matter what is happening around you, you can't help but be happy, optimistic, and exuberant. <laughs> Even in the face of certain death, terror, or unimaginable monsters from the outer void, you can delude yourself. It's the only nice thing, this is dead. Such pleasing delusions one. make you blind to threats, so you become rather foolhardy, reckless, and prone to causing great anxiety and this around you. If anything or anyone prevents your cheerful demeanor, you become extremely anxious and suffer a penalty die. For all skill rolls until your compulsion can be indulged. To resist That's... your delusion and see things for what they really are, you must make a hard sanity roll. Oh. Successful use of psychoanalysis slows down the effects. The picture is also amazing. So here you go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that seems very accurate to her character. Shot in the stomach. Oh, it's fine. It's just a scratch. It's only a flesh wound. <laughs> All right. So now we move on to Genevieve. Or we could not. Okay. Say. I don't like that long pause. That is that is a disconcerting long pause. That's because I'm assigning yours. <laughs> no randomness for you. Besides the disassociative identity disorder, of course. That'd be fun, but no. Yes. Question asking mania. You have a compulsive <laughs> urge to ask questions wherever and whenever you're unable to resist questioning everything. Most of the time, your questions will be directed at others. However, sometimes you'll begin to question yourself. You may feel compelled to ask questions of those in authority, shopkeepers, religious leaders, anyone. You may be concerned with the matters of import or, more likely, obvious things that don't require questions. Sometimes repeating the same question over and over over again. You cry or grow angry if no one gives you the answers you desire. When preventing from asking questions, you become anxious and take the penalty die. Successful use of psychoanalysis allows you to temporarily ignore it. <laughs> that is your second to go with disassociative identity identity oh, disorder. Mommy, what are those bunnies doing? Mommy, what are but those bunnies doing? <laughs> My entertainment was watching Steve's reaction. 
Because the fact that it's your character got that yep. means and that they're all coming directly at Aubrey. <clears throat> and with my day job... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll share the love. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay. And, last but not least, just to make this game interesting, because technically, for those who don't know, may have missed the last session, Genevieve's character is theoretically out of the game because they hit she hit negative sanity last session. Oh, God. However, that's not fun. We just make you really crazy and let you keep going. Not real world crazy. So, last but not least, because you should be dead, I'm punishing you with Lycairomania. An un uncontrollable compulsion to make loud noises, mostly at inappropriate times. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fantastic. Oh, wow. I feel so called out oh. right now. Your character just got way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Especially as we enter Act 4 when stealth is of the utmost importance. Funerals are going to be a blast with uh, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Spells. You all understand how that works, right? You looked your spell up, I'm assuming? Probably not. Gonna be honest with you, I was. I got told I can influence others, but not anything beyond that. Uh, you all should have gotten the name of your spell, which we will go over now. Let's begin again with Aubrey. Or, I mean, Eric's character. Wow, words. I know they're hard. Mm, let's see. Eric well, it's not going to be in the investigator's book, right? It's going to be just in the core book? I'm guessing they don't put magic in the investigator's. It's a whole separate book I have, but what's the name of the spell? Influence Others? Influence Others, okay. Was that the spell or the category? I don't know. I was Sounds just told like was... influence others is what I got for the that uh, the twenty roll, or was it a d thirty roll? I think it was that a was not the name of the spell, so it should be listed in the Discord chat if you scroll up. I oh. remember it was something terrible, and everyone laughed because it was so bad. It's like maybe it was the yellow sign. Oh yes, it I was. did get the yellow sign. Yeah, yes, that's the I name of the spell. The okay. Spell. So the influence others was something else. Okay. No, influence others was the category. Oh, I see. Spells Got are it. categorized right. in this book. The Grand Grimoire of the Cthulhu Mythos, for those wondering, which you give from Chaos. Yeah. Hello, sign. Which is funny, because I, I asked somebody if they had seen it. <laughs> just just on a whim, and then I ended up learning the spell, so that's appropriate. The yellow sign, let me see what it says. Okay, the yellow sign. Uh... Wow. Uh, it costs you 1d8 sanity points and 10 temporary power. Every time I cast it? Yeah. Temporary power comes back when you rest, slowly but surely. And remember, Ten, if your power okay. drops below your current sanity, you lose your current sanity up to the power. <laughs> Watch that it doesn't drop. Okay. Now, it doesn't cost magic points, though. Uh, takes an hour, possibly more, to cast the spell. Yeah. First, using mundane tools, you draw or fashion the sign on the surface. In the second part of the spell, you imbue it with power. Once it's active, it provokes disgust and uneasy feelings for those who view it, causing sanity loss. It seems to swirl, shimmer, and squirm. Okay. Those who lose points from seeing it... The next time they sleep, we'll make another sanity roll, and if failed, we'll have terrible nightmares about Carcosa. Fun. Each time thereafter that they sleep, it happens again until eventually Carcosa takes them. If this spell is cast by someone who is not a worshiper of Astor, you dire consequences ensue. <laughs> the Unbeliever will begin to see the yellow sign everywhere, each time automatically losing one sanity point until they became a quivering wreck. Once enough sanity has been lost to cause indefinite sanity, where you're already at, you begin to suffer from, suffer from visions of the king in yellow, which in turn become a desire to summon him, to beg forgiveness for using his sign in vain. Cool. 
don't see the spell anywhere. I, I like I'm on the I find it in the uh, monsters, beasts, and alien nope. gods section. But nope, this know. is a whole other book called the Grand Grimoire of the Cthulhu Mythos. Oh, that's why I can't find it. I don't have that book. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Cool. So I lose ten power temporarily. Don't want it to drop below sanity. How much sanity does it cost to cast again? One d eight. Nope, okay. no magic points are necessary for this one now. Okay. However, also, anyone who looks at your yellow sign uh, is not hypnotized necessarily, but they're at disadvantage to resist your suggestions. Cool. So in other words, if you make any kind of social role, charm, psychology, anything like fast that, talk. fast talk, you get advantage, advantage die and they get a disadvantage die to resist if they've seen your sign. And it takes an hour to cast and an hour to imbue, correct? No, an hour total, because you have to paint it perfectly. Got it. All right. However, you could paint it on something portable, carry it around, and then turn it on and cover it. Yes. Sounds cool. Okay. Correct. Theoretically, only ever casting it once. Okay. Yeah. Aubrey, what did you get? I think I got... It was either fly or levitate. One of you got levitate, one of you got fly. Who got the levitate? Uh, I got levitate. Okay. Then I got fly. I, I can go whoosh. Light. 15 magic points and a d10 of sanity points. Takes one night to cast, or in other words, whatever downtime period you get in the case of this game. Okay. Basically, you're creating an ointment. That, uh, wow, it, it even, wow. Creating an ointment <laughs> requiring the rendered fat from an unbaptized male child and other gas components. Yeah, we're going to skip that part. Uh, must be brewed in a cauldron by the dark of a new moon. So we're going to say you just make a really gross concoction when you get somewhere where you can get ingredients. Sure. No, no ch fat children necessary. <laughs> uh, direct sunlight will destroy it, which isn't a problem for you. Uh, only use it after sunset and it gets 1d4 applications when you create it it lasts for 1d6 hours allowing you to fly Ten. okay um, question about magic mechanics yeah if I don't have 10 magic points or if I, if I don't have 15 magic points you couldn't use it in that case. I just can't use the spell. Well, you can, but you you substitute health for the difference. Oh, health makes up excess magic points? Yeah. <sighs> you can put blood into the casting. Cool. Got it. Okay, carry on. How many magic points do you have? Ten. Ooh. Well, you know, four uses. Probably worth it. Levitate. Cost 1d6 sanity points is instantaneous, and the magic point cost is variable. Uh, you pick a target, it doesn't have to be you. And the target can slowly float through the air. You must be able to touch them, and it's one magic point per five points of size. Heavy, big things are harder. Uh, the target levitates three to five feet off the ground for 1d6 minutes, falling from a height. The target falls in, like it's feather fall, basically, and halts a few feet off the ground. Each extra magic point expended allows the user to move the target one yard in any direction. Uh, if you don't move them, then you have to use something to propel yourself, and I decide what kind of uh, that gives you. Like off a tree or something. Also, if you choose to move someone, they can't stop unless they can grab something and stop themselves. They'll just float until the spell expires. So you could levitate someone off the edge of a building and then and unsummon the spell, no fall. I love it. Okay. So that just leaves the dock. I got a circle of warding, or a spell of warding. Warding! One magic point per stone, five turns to cast. 
A number of ordinary white stones are placed on the ground. As you please, except that each must be within a yard of each other. When cast, a shimmering heat haze can be seen over the stones. Thereafter, any stone is moved or touched. The caster will be aware of that fact. And then the spell is broken. And if I recall correctly, you said I could only use it in the demi mond. Correct, because you're not fully insane. There will also be other effects in the demi mond because it's the demi mond. That's actually true of all of your spells. There will be unpredictable effects when cast in the demi mond. Ah, good to know. So in your case, ever it will actually be a warding, where in the real world it's an alarm spell, and the demi mond will actually affect things. Oh, wait, so I, I can use a min- minor, or a more minor version. <laughs> in the real world? No, you can't in your case, but a, a regular wizard could. Okay. Okay. Last but not least, luck point raises. We got awards last week from the audience. Uh, I know I did. Roll it. Give yourself a d10 of luck points. Seven! Rachel, did you get any points from other players last week? Uh, yeah, my friend Mr. Morden uh, gave me a vote. How many did you get from the cast? Uh, I remember I got one from Steve. Okay, so roll 2d10. Thirteen. Okay, pretty good. And then roll your luck and see if you can get a natural roll. Let me add the luck first. Now I roll. Ooh. Yep. Uh, so that means I get to roll again? Uh, did you get a 10? Uh, or, I mean, no. you, you failed to roll? Oh, no, I did really well. Okay, that means you don't get any more luck points. Okay, I rolled a one. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. I I do let you, yes, you get three automatically on a one. I'll take it. Steven, did yes. you get any player awards? Uh, one, I think. So roll the d10, add those, and then roll your luck and see if you get an afterwards. D10, add one? D10 and add those. Oh, I got it. So, D10, another 9. Wow, nice. So, that puts me up to that. I have a ton of luck. Awesome. And then roll your luck. Uh, I succeeded. Okay. Ever, did you get a player award? I got one from... Eric. Roll uh, D10, add that to your luck. One. Uh, okay, and then roll your luck and see if you get a natural raise. Nope. Oh. One point for you. Okay. Wow. Eric, you must have gotten that last uh, player award, so roll D10, add those. Nine. Nine. Nice. And then roll your luck and see if you get a natural raise. Nope. nope. And Jared, roll your luck. See if you get a natural raise. A D10? No. Roll your luck as a score. Oh. And if you fail to roll, then you can add a D10. Okay. Nope. No more luck for you. Okay. Cool. Opening scene will be the four of you dealing with the aftermath of your horrible, horrible day. So prepare yourselves and we'll begin. And then after that, we'll see what happens to Jared. Or to Joshua, I apologize. Who you still never found and we're no longer in the demi month. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we left just... Or we left off as we were just leaving the dig site, I think. Uh, That's correct. And we're just setting off to... You're going to try to get back to town to actually do some investigation on the north side, yeah. 
Yeah, because I think that's where the Miskatonic kids... Or, sorry, this was where the Miskatonic kids were, but I think there was another site on the north side of the island that... That's not visit. where you're going, no. You were going back to the actual town to look up what's going on on the island. I don't remember if it was the Natural History Museum or the Toy Museum. You were going to one of the museums, or it's Town Hall. You wanted records. You wanted history. Mm hmm Okay. So, yes. Begin emerging from the woods back onto the road several miles from the abandoned police car. Your next nearest ride, with all of your new madnesses having finally settled in. Uh, I, I feel like Jenny is just muttering to herself, like, what was that? What What do you want me to do? I'm not sure. I just... Stream of consciousness asking herself questions. If one of us sees anybody in a pliable uh, mental state, he'll just get grab some like uh, napkins or some wet naps. I'm like, you, you got some blood on you right there. Just just go ahead and take care of that, and I'm gonna be over here. <sighs> you know, everything everything is falling apart, but that's okay. We're going to be just fine, Jenny. You're going to be all right. You're gonna go, uh, Genevieve. You're going to go back to normal, you know, as soon as we replace the, the crown and the scepter. And Barnabas, you're, well, you. <laughs> but I'm very positive about that. And Aubrey, you know, I, I just, I believe with every ounce of my being that you're going to be okay. How um, do you know? I just, I feel it. I feel it deep down inside. But what kind of feelings? Um... Like a bubbling spring. That so, smells like flowers. It's okay, Doctor. We're all, we're all just, we're all fine. Like, mm -hmm. nothing to worry about. Exactly. I'm doing great. See, that's the spirit. We just gotta stay positive. Right? Oh, yes. We're gonna be very positive. Very positive here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Precisely. Now, I think, I think we could just head in any old direction and fate would lead us right to the scepter and crown. When we know of any, you know, things were to come after us, I, um, I single-handedly took out that monster by myself. I of course I you did. Don't remember that happening, but you know what? It was That's... dark. It was dark, and you were obviously confused and scared. Well, I took action and jumped on its back and used the weapon that I carry to. You don't. To... You don't have. Why don't I remember that? Hmm? Don't worry. Why don't I remember that? Hmm. Uh, you were... It was a really long day. <laughs> I don't think it was that long. Well, it was pretty long. I've had longer days. Oh, oh, how really do you went? Hmm? Oh, just... Lots of times with lots of stuff. Just, you know, this mm -hmm. isn't that bad. I've mm -hmm. gotten to so much more crazy than any of this. I don't think you guys would understand. It's okay, though. You know, that's that's exactly the spirit. Just think of the worst thing you've ever been through, and that's probably much worse than this. Uh, yeah. Genevieve will start singing to herself while wandering away. Oh, oh, Genevieve, no, stay with us, but also you can keep singing. It's absolutely beautiful and just what we need to perk our spirits. Oh, what do you want me to sing? Oh, God. I want to find a car as soon as possible. Your Turn on the radio. Beautiful little heart desires. Uh, I, I remember as a kid um, being taught a hymn. Which was a uh, call and response of like a little kid asking Jesus various questions. Genevieve's gonna sing that to herself. 
It's so ridiculously appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long ways back to town. I'm looking for a vehicle or any way that we can get back to there as quick and as abandoned possible. police car is all there's going to be, and that's miles away. Oh. Uh, remember, you took like a, what was it, 15 mile walk? Before? Yeah. We're walking, we're walking. Then we will fade out on that seat for a moment. Joshua, you're being carried through the air by a demon. Whoa. whoa. Okay. Mm, this is really high up. <clears throat> Oh god. And you can see him like screaming like Jesus what? and I believe his claws are digging into my like He's thigh, holding you right? tightly, but he it's holding you tightly, but it hasn't injured you yet. Oh. oh my my arm and he's like screaming, Oh god, I am really high up. Jesus fuck Oh god you just gonna passively go along for the ride? Uh, well, there's nothing much I can do. Okay. <laughs> After about ten minutes of flight, uh, it dives down towards the forest. And you're pretty sure it's snickered. Or something similar. Because it ducks down with just its feet into the tree line. So, whack, 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 whack. Oh! Oh! Oh. You were getting lacerated and smacked left and right oh. by trees. Go ahead and give me uh, four dex rolls. Four dex rolls? Oh my god. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Four. Okay. So... You're getting hit with branches and you're like, that's a tree. What do I do? <sighs> tree head on. Uh, no, on I'm going to try to dodge it and get out that's, of the way. That's what the dex roll was for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the first one, you failed. You oh. hit the tree head on and, oh. it, and it tears you free of the demon. But oh, Jesus. It literally tears you free of the demon, though. No, that's <laughs> oh. Second deck roll you make, so dex roll you make, so a big branch on the way down, you catch on, and you don't catch it with your face, you catch it with your arm. Third dex roll, however, you don't make, so I'm gonna need you to make a luck roll. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> that is a failure, okay. You only grab on with one arm, which is immediately dislocated. <laughs> And then you fall and catch most of the big branches on the way down. You failed that last one. Oh. You hit the ground face first, and the wind is knocked right out of you. <laughs> you roll over, lacerated, knocked half stupid, arm dislocated, chunks of flesh missing from your arms, and you're like surrounded by five figures in a semicircle looking down at you, all of them in black and yellow robes, but their faces cowled. Can I, like, pop my arm back in the socket? <laughs> uh, you could try, but the first thing that happens is one of the, the biggest one in the middle of the five, none of them say a word, but the biggest one leans down as if to grab a hold of you. When there's a uh, crack of a high-powered rifle, and the demon creature shrieks and roars, and there's a big cr crashing sound in the trees. The four, the four of the five cultists whip around, and disappear into the woods as if to find out what's happening and deal with it. The big one stays on top of you, puts a foot on your chest to hold you down, and starts <laughs> looking around after he pulls out a gun. <sighs> Go ahead and make a first aid roll. Wow, something I'm good at. First aid. Right here. And a power roll. In a power row, you said? Power, yep. Oh, come on. I'm, I'm spending the luck on that one. Okay. You're able to psych yourself into it. Oops. 
my bad. And you throw yourself into the tree behind you and crack that shoulder back into place. Oh. 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 You can't see the cult. You can't see the cultist's face. But you feel like if you could, he'd be impressed. Oh. Or she, or it. Who knows? <laughs> um. You hear another high-powered rifle crack. Small oh. arms fired in the distance. Two more high-powered rifle cracks. The guy's just standing there with his boot on your chest. Who, who are you? Uh, he says in an unnaturally deep voice, Your end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the That's way, <laughs> you now have three hit points instead of twelve. Okay. Ooh. I'm fucked, guys. <laughs> Didn't lose them all at once, though, so you don't take the massive wound penalty. You lost them one branch at a time. <laughs> that's also you that's, made that first aid roll, so actually you have four hit points. Yeah, cool. That's mean, Tyler. <laughs> one branch at a time. <laughs> Not as mean as doing it all at once, and he has to make a stamina no, roll or die from massive wounds. Roasting the man that way. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> My end. <laughs> you will be sacrificed to our Lord. Oh yeah, who's your Lord? <laughs> he who cannot be named, that which walketh behind the rose. Well, wow, how original. <laughs> Maybe you should find someone better. Our yellow Lord. He presses down on your cracked ribs. Oh. Do not speak ill oh. of our king. <laughs> I, I, I've gone through so much shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> More small arms fire. Closer rifle crack. Jesus, what the fuck are you guys fighting? Fuck me. Uh, the cultist laughs in his unnatural baritone and says, uh, Nothing but a mosquito. An annoyance, a plea. You guys must be terrible shots because you've unloaded a lot of clips. <laughs> this is only a small nuisance in the greater scheme of our and and then a big hole pumps out at the front of his chest that you can see throughout his back. And he falls on top of you, and then there's a rifle crack like a second later. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, oh god. The guy falls on you and hits you. And the blood hits you. But oh, wait, blood's supposed to be like thick and sticky, not squirmy. Oh god! <laughs> Some kind of bizarre black and yellow worms are leaking out of the wound. What the fuck? And I like start like going like this, trying to get the worms off, like fucking freaking out. <laughs> Make a sanity roll. Oh Jesus Christ. Five, hell yeah. Nice. You only lose one point. <laughs> There's oh. one point. Okay. Um, the worms are trying to crawl into your various orifices. Go ahead and make a, another hmm. dex roll. Oh, Jesus. Something's definitely going to get in me. Oh, yeah. Something's definitely getting in me. <laughs> uh, you're unable to fling them off, so you're going to have to do something else, or else one of them's getting in your ear, or... I'm, like, frantically... Your, your bottom entry out. holes. I'm also going to try to, like... Um, like, snot rocket. It's gonna take more than that. You're gonna have to do something drastic. Uh, okay. Let me have a food allergy. Make an, in <laughs> make an intelligence any... roll to get an idea. What? Intelligence roll to get an idea. Uh, Give me a minute. Intelligence roll. Okay. Oh, hard fire. Success. Fire? Burn, burn yourself to get them off, yes. Extreme measures must be taken. Got uh, a light? Yeah, I, uh... You do have a lighter, yes. Yeah, I look around and I just, like, take the lighter and just go right here, and I just run it down my arm just like that towards my orifices everywhere. <laughs> and then you'll have, like, lighter burn marks all over me. Yes. Make another power roll, sanity roll. <laughs> No! 
shit, I think that one. <gasps> oh my. <sighs> you lose two points of sanity that time, but you successfully <sighs> stopped them from entering your body, I think. I'm pretty sure you'd have felt it if one had gotten in. <sighs> you roll away from the corpse. And the guy comes charging out of the woods real low and fast. Like a like fucking snake eyes, this guy. And uh, he's dressed all in camo, except he looks less like a professional soldier and more like a government contractor of some kind. He looks at you, runs over to you, kicks the body away from you, uh, yell, uh, whispers something into his throat, and then another snake eyes looking motherfucker comes out of the woods with a goddamn flamethrower and torches the body. Burned it with fire. <laughs> Who the fuck are you guys? These guys get it. <laughs> uh, and then a third guy comes out of the woods. This guy doesn't look like Snake Eyes go, though. This guy looks like a lifeline. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> like I'm already. <laughs> he runs over to you and, like, starts checking you over and jams something in your arm and injects something. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and then starts applying, uh... Compression bandages to your wounds, you're gonna recover two more hit points. Oh. The morphine hits fast and hard. Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, wow. The, big, the, the, the guy that came out of the woods first, the big guy, like built like the rock, oh. walks up to you and just kind of puts you up against the tree in a sitting position, like you're a sack of potatoes, and uh, says real quiet, like, you seen this woman? And shows you a picture of Dr. Farouk. An old <laughs> picture, though. This one's old. What the fuck? What does she have to do with this? So you have seen her. Tell us all you know about her. First you tell me what the fuck's going on! He looks at you, he looks at his two buddies, they all chuckle. They menacingly lean over you. You go first. <laughs> How can I trust that? What makes you think if you'll kill me if I tell you the truth? Uh, he pulls out a fucking knife from, uh... What was those 90s movies helped me out here? Butterfly knife? What's Crocodile Hunter? Oh, Crocodile Dundee, the, uh... Yes, yeah. Crocodile Dundee knife. knife. And he puts it up against your throat and says, I will kill you if you don't talk. <laughs> you're you're pretty serious. Okay. <laughs> well, I may be a smartass, but I sure ain't fucking dumb. I can tell you that for sure. Do you tell them what they want to know? <laughs> yeah, I know her. Okay. I do. But I only tell her like half. Make I'm a power like, roll with a penalty die. Say, uh, we had a feet. disagreement. Mm -hmm. I crashed a van with her in it. I don't know whether she uh, she is alive or dead. I don't know. But I got carried away by some demon asshole. <laughs> so yeah. Make a, make a power roll, but roll with a penalty die, because you're high. I do. Okay, now oh, hit the... extreme success. Oh, crap. I got it. Yep. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I'll only charge you eight luck to make that a success, because you've got a extreme success on the first one. Hell yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay. You're able to only give them the information you want to. They interrogate you for five minutes, and then they stop like they hear something on their comms and still can't see. And uh, they look at each other, and they're like, sounds like uh, number four is in trouble. We better go see what's going on. And they just snake <laughs> eyes back into the woods like they were never there. Oh, oh I got to thank you guys for saving me. Holy shit. Whew. Okay. Oh, he gets up from the tree. And a hand grabs your ankle. Oh, my God. With an iron grip, like, squeezes so hard you can almost feel things cracking. What the fuck? I look the back. Dead, the my... dead cultist is holding on to you, starts laughing, and pulls himself to his feet. I am going to, like, oh. kick him. You actually see when he pulls himself to his feet. When he gets up to the squat position, you can see the bullet hole. The squirming worms have nearly closed it with their bodies. 
burn it with fire. Oh, Christ. <laughs> okay, and I'm literally going to. Kick. Yeah, this, this guy. This guy is like fourth degree burns over ninety percent of his body because they flamethrowered him. It's a horror show. So make another uh, sanity roll. <laughs> oh God. Oh, can I spend luck? No, can't make luck on sanity. And I'm combat. Oh. Never mind then. Four sanity that time. Oh. Up to seven for the scene. Doing well. Jeez. Compared to them, you're doing well. Oh. Um, how do I change my thing real quick for my sanity? The one side is permanent, or one side is uh, maximum. The other side is uh, current. Okay. Uh, current should be I on the left. Oh. Not letting me change it. Okay, never mind. I got it. Thank you. Anyways, go on. Um. You said you were gonna try to do something about it. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to kick this fucker off. Like, kick him off. Do everything I can. Punch him in the face. Do something. Find a tree. Bash him with it. Make a brawl roll <laughs> or a, fi a fighting roll. Hand to hand combat. Words. <laughs> Make a punch the cultist roll. Actually, could I maybe do a spot hidden to find a branch to beat him with it? You don't need to. Okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, you hit him over the head with one of the many branches you broke in your face on the way down the tree. Um, and you're beating him with it, and you can't tell if you're making any progress because he's still standing up and laughing. Just when you're really getting carried away with it, and you get a good swing batter swing right in the face something really heavy hits you from the back and you see from the corner of your eye more yellow robes and then that's it you mm. hit the ground unconscious oh time my. passes where you have hideous nightmares of ochre cities amber cities of nightmare or madness in alien worlds beyond the black voids of space the black depths of space and the uh, empty void and then you wake up Oh fuck! Smells like dirt and earth, like a like a cellar. It's very. There's no light at all, though. It's completely pitch black. And you you sit yourself up and you realize you're on the ground. It's slightly damp and, and dirty, like it's dirt floor. And you realize your hands are trussed with zip ties behind your back. Jesus, what? Wow. Okay. Oh, Jesus. So You can hear well, chanting above you, many voices. Chanting something very bad. You don't know what, but it makes you feel bad. Oh, well, looks like I better say my prayers. Cause... <sighs> Make a listen roll. What? Listen. That is the wrong thing. Oh, my God. That's the one. My, the dice are not in my luck today. You want to blow a bunch of luck or keep that? <laughs> uh, uh, That's a lot. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm going to die anyway, so I'm... Can you blow it? Ooh, no, actually... I'm going to take it. I'm going to save it to make my okay. escape. Let's see what I can do. <laughs> make a spot hidden. That, ooh, I, that's what I'm good at. Thank you. Okay. Jeez. Now, I will make any, I do an You can hardly make anything out in the dark, and you don't catch the noise of the rats disappearing into the hole in the wall. However, you stand up and feel your way around with your face. Your hands are zip-tied behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> your poor face. Along the wall until you find a cellar window. And you realize in your current condition... You can get out if you're desperate enough, but you're going to have to go through that glass and it's going to hurt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's do Power it. roll. He just laughs maniacally and he just <laughs> goes head bore through it. Make a power roll. He don't care no more. Hell, I'm gonna make that. Ex no, should I make uh, that? It won't, it won't matter. Yeah, okay. Don't do that. 
You do, however, work up the nerve to put yourself through a window face first. Because you don't have hands. And then you wriggle your way out like uh, Bishop going through the pipe and aliens out through mm -hmm. the broken ass glass. I'm not taking <laughs> any more hit points away from you, but the pain is immense. I'm going to give me a sanity oh. roll. Hey, you're just going. Okay. Is there a make way? It, Can I like make find a sanity a roll because the pain is amazing. Sanity roll? Okay. Is there like a... Can I do a spot hidden check to maybe... Yep, yeah, no. Four more points of sanity. Hmm. Which is enough for you to also get to roll on the phobia deck. So roll a d50. Okay. <laughs> you can just click, uh, Jared, you can just click, like, the 10, the, and then just change it the 1 to a 5, and then hit enter. Yep, give me a minute. All right, then... You said d10? 50. Yeah, click the d10, oh, no. and then when it yeah. pops up in the thing, you can just change it to 5. Okay. Change the 1 so to a 5. five. Yep. Okay, five, thirty. Okay, thirty. You rolled five d ten. <laughs> yeah, we'll still take the thirty. It's within the threshold. Okay, that's all right. So now roll percentile. Oh, so roll percentile. Gotcha. Call, call high or low. Oh, oh god. Hi. Yeah, we gotta see if you're obsessed with this or terrified of this. Oh, wow. Hi, you say. Obsessed with sharp pointy objects. Oh, you nice. have Eichmomania. You have to give me an injection? Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> you have an obsession with sharp pointy objects. They can oh, include okay. knives, needles, forks, nails, pins, whatever it is. You might have a compulsive desire to collect them, even stealing them. Alternatively, you may also feel the morbid need to be pierced or pierce. Um, it's like it's like that glass that cut you to shit. <laughs> preferably you, but if not, but you know, someone else will do in a pinch. Uh, Speaking of that, can in I the do... presence of sharp objects, you suffer from an overwhelming obsessive compulsive response, which will give you a penalty <laughs> die if you don't indulge the mania. Oh boy. Psychoanalysis will temporarily make this go away. Apparently, you blame all of this nonsense on that Morphe. Oh. Don't actually, don't actually have to. That's just a joke. There you go. It's in chat. Uh, can <laughs> I actually look around to look for a pointy stick and try to cut my zip ties off? That actually, uh, you're lost in your head as the madness sinks in, and you stumble blindly through the woods, breathing heavily, giggling to yourself, whatever you want to be doing. Until what seems like hours and hours and hours later, you stumble out onto the road and collapse. 20 <laughs> yards in front of the group on the road arguing. Joshua stumbles out of the woods. Glass embedded in his torso, the side of his neck and his face. He's got massive burn scars all over his face. And it looks like he got hit by a train or something large. Half his body is bruised. He stumbles out of the woods. Healing to himself, spits out a wad of blood and phlegm, and then goes face first onto the ground, unconscious. He's zip tied. Oh, nice. So that's all of Barnabas us. sees the blood and is like, you all, you all see nope. this, yes. Okay. Uh, I Kenny found it. will <laughs> explain <laughs> what happened. Uh, I, well done, Steve. He is unconscious. I, I, fa oh. I found, I found Joshua. Joshua, oh, I, I he was lost and I found him. So, you on. see, all we had to do was remain positive, and our oh. missing friend was returned to us. I'll run out and oh kind of what like. Hap uh, what happened to him? Jenny, uh, I have no idea. And I'll get out of the car and actually run out and like try to help him. You have not made it to the car yet. You're still just trudging oh, down I the thought, road. Oh, I thought I thought we were driving. Got it. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Then even this, better. This happens immediately after the, your last. We were talking. The, you? Then even better. I found him, um, so uh, I'll run over and just be like, "Josh, are you okay? Are you okay?" And like, I'll I have my survival knife, so I'll I'll cut his zip ties off. He is unconscious. He will need a treatment roll. I'm not looking at all at yeah, Josh. You'll I need, hand you'll the, need the first aid to the doctor. Barnum, like, nope. 
Barnabas. Mm -mm, no, on. no, no, Barnabas. Nope. And I'm looking. On. I'm looking. I'm literally doing this. What is wrong like with you? Like scanning the, the. Also, the, you'd be, uh, where you'd have from. you'd have the nausea at this stage because he's bleeding from a lot of cuts and embedded. Oh yeah, I'm like. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, see, this is what happens with with very heavy trauma. You know, sometimes things are developed la, 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 that la, la, just la, la, you don't la, la, expect. La, la, la. Uh, I can do my best. I will help Jenny Joshua. Jenny would like to first aid Joshua. Do it. It's not great, but it doesn't suck. Nope, that is the, not the roll. Yeah. There, cool, look at There's, that. Ooh, ooh, very that's nice. Good roll. Joshua, you can recover four hit points. Uh, Genevieve, you can bring him back to consciousness, but before he can say anything to the party, you're able to ascertain. He fell from a big height. He's had dislocated and relocated his arm. He suffered massive contusions and abrasions. And it looks like he was burned, like maybe torture burn. Cause that's kind of what it looks like. And also, he's high, but you don't know what on. Uh, so Joshua will come to consciousness, be like, "What happened to your arm? What what building did you fall off of? Who burned you? Why? What made all these cuts on you?" Jenny, let's leave him alone, okay? Let's, let's leave him. Alone. I was able to patch him up. And so, but he needs to be able to rest. Oh, but we should know what happened because what happened to him could happen to us. So what happened to you, Joshua? He wasn't positive enough. Am I like in the right of actually? Yeah, you're in, you're back to conscious and you can say and do what you want. You're just still high on morphine. You don't have to roleplay that. Some shit. What are you on? Don't you know that drugs are bad? I'm so in so much pain right now. Yes, I know drugs are bad. I'll, uh... just, and like he's got slurred voice and he's like because of the because of the morphine he's like some shit's happened. I can tell you that for sure. Oh fuck these cultists like in yellow fucking robes. Is it yellow? Yellow and black. And they were made out of fucking worms. And they crawled all like and the thing is, is one of them like got s stabbed by something I don't know what it was, and collapsed on me. And it's, it's, it's sorry, it's a, it's a little foggy. I'm just really, really in pain. But gonna be best why you were from high. saying the f word. They. It turned into worms, and they start going into my orifices, and I, oh, I used the lighter I had to burn them off. Oh. And then <laughs> here's the kicker: someone's on this island looking for you, their doc. Oh, oh, that's so exciting! Oh, I'm really they, looking they, forward to making exactly. some new friends. They're Do you think that friend. might be the sniper who shot the cop? I don't if know. It is. Yeah, maybe we right. can get know a it is. big hug. There's more of them. And no, they, they, seem to think, oh, no, they seem to think you're talking about one person, Joshua. Okay, obviously, it's not them. I took him out. <clears throat> I got rid of the sniper, Barnabas. remember? Remember, I took him out, and then I gifted his rifle to you, Barnabas. I gave that I, to you. I don't think I remember that. Great, can you give it back? <laughs> I don't know what you did with it. Did you lose it like you lose everything I give you? Oh, we're going to do this again. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Do I have the, the rifle on me? <laughs> Let's just yes, say. because they did give it to you last session. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I had it or not. I looked down the scope the way that he had come from, and I'm looking into the trees to see if I spot any yellow... You don't see anything. Let's now, just Joshua, you, it's clear to you that they're, they're, they all think you're talking about a singular individual. You about this, that. This isn't this isn't one single person. This was a team of guys. How many? So it's a party. Highly fucking trained. <laughs> Doctor Farouk, that's what enough to break through the doing, mania. Doctor, that's enough to break through the mania, knowing there's an entire hit squad on the island after you. Yeah. Which How means you now you devolve into the second. Which means you devolve into the second stage now, where you're uh, having uh, anxiety about it and you're getting penalty die. <laughs> Oh God. Because Genevieve, they were oh. not had fucking snake eyes bullshit. They had high caliber weapons. 
And oh, no amount of no amount of positivity is gonna fix this. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna uh, die. I'm, to I'm gonna you. die. Oh, well, the thing I'm is, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Alive. We're all gonna die. I helped you, Doctor. Uh, eventually, I didn't tell if we don't move. Alive. I told him we got into an accident, and I didn't know if you were alive or dead. So Everyone, quiet. Everyone, apparently. I'm the only one that can keep it together, and I'm the one that has to get us all back on track like I've been doing this entire time. The way that I was able to take out the monster and take out the sniper and keep all Barnabas of you alive. Barnabas is doing this. You. I will break that hand off your arm. Everyone, in the car, we're getting out of here. Now. Now. Everyone. What if the car breaks down on the way? And I'll just do angry mom go voice now. until everyone gets in the car. We should probably get uh, moving now. Potential trigger warning, Steve. You have to get the keys from the dead police officer to get the car. Mm. With the missing face. So who's going to do that? Oh, not me. <laughs> I go up oh. to the uh, cop and try to find a knife. Uh, they already stripped him of his stuff. Okay, never mind. But they didn't get the keys because they didn't matter at the time. They had their van. I... I, I, I wouldn't nope. have an issue getting the keys off him just to use the car. And as he was asking, as he was picking them up, I asked him, like, when you're done, can I have those? <laughs> the keys? Yeah, I, I, I like them. Yeah. Look, this like, just... When we're done driving, I would like to have those keys. I, if you want to have keys, we've got thousands of keys back where we're, where we're going, so just don't worry, Okay. <laughs> All right. I like those. I'll get you. We'll, we'll get, I'll get you all the keys that I can. All right. Okay. We just got to keep going. Okay. Don't I'm worry. Gonna go in the Don't car. worry. So I've gotten. I've gotten many people out of situations like this before. So let's just keep moving. We're gonna get okay. in another accident, aren't we? <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I'm not driving. The, so you head over to the other side of the car, Aubrey, and you see the uniform of the officer. Just the uniform, okay. including the keys attached to the belt. And then a trail of what looks like viscera and fluids and blood going off into the woods. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Hmm. I'm just closing my eyes and waiting to be let into the car. So <laughs> it's the zombie apocalypse now. Actually, none of you see this because you had to specifically it's, go around the car and so look. So it's oh. just the uniform, no body, and then the trail leads off into the woods. Mm -hmm. Got it. Cool. Great. Yeah. No problem at all. Yeah. I she gets keys, no problem. Yeah, so I'll take the keys and just be like, I can handle that. That's okay. If it comes up, don't worry. It'll be fine. You can, you've handled all sorts of stuff like that before. That's not new. <laughs> All right, uh, I have the keys, everybody. Um, they were under, they were underneath. They were hit. They were hidden. They had fallen off the officer, and they they went off the side of the road. I had to go and get them, and they were very. It was very hard to find. But you're welcome. I was able to find it, and now we can keep going. So you're welcome. I'm going to climb into the back seat, and I'm just gonna sit there like this, like. <laughs> uh, Jenny will awesome. sit next to you. Uh, and we'll just pepper you with questions about like what happened? How many people were there? How did you get this Gosh. cut? How did you get that cut? What happened to your arm? And I'm gonna just like go like this and then you went like after like three seconds you'll you hear <laughs> <laughs> Mommy and okay. Daddy sit in the front so uh, Aubrey can Why drive Why are you snoring? I'll, 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 I'll ride shotgun No sniper rifle Yes, I'll ride sniper rifle. Okay. You managed to uneventfully drive back into town in the sheriff's police car. Yep. Yeah. That doesn't look suspicious. Nope, not at all. <laughs> so, where do you go once you get back to town? Where do you where do you park this thing? The library, duh. Uh, I remember, we, you, you do, do we... have one more car. We do? Got a sports oh, my. car. <laughs> yeah, the van's like wrecked pretty much. The beyond. van is fucked, but yeah. you still got asshole sports car. Okay. Can can we n realize how bad it's gonna look driving this thing back into town? Yes, you don't need to make a roll for that. Okay. So can we park this thing on the edge of town and 
So you can go around the coastline where most, because of the time of day it is now, most people aren't active on the road. Okay. All the way back to the ferry where the sports car is. Yes. You just kind of pull the police car into one of the ferry garages and close the door. <laughs> okay. If you want. Sounds good. Let's do that. So, how pretentious are you, Barnabas? How much do you like to flaunt your money? I mean, it's all that he is, really. <laughs> um, he's a, all you are yeah. is pretension? Okay. Pretty much. So, uh... Let's see. Would you like a MX-5? That's a Mazda. Toyota Supra, Corvette, or a Porsche 718. Oh, man. Think about the fact that like you have Porsche... to put people in the car. Yeah, the Porsche would be the most logical choice, but that doesn't. That seats like maybe two people One and, and a like, half, yeah. I don't know, a <laughs> half of a t shirt in the back. Um, so I'll go with the more roomier one. I don't know. I don't know cars that well, so. Well, the um, Supra has the best Corvette? back space seat. Uh, the Supra? Okay. That. Just for your reference, it's a decent mid-range sports car, 2020 version. Right. Uh, yeah, that's your new ride. Cool. And of course, <laughs> uh, Barnabas lets no one drive but him. It's his car. It's his baby. Okay. I've got the keys. After all, those of you in the back are getting to know each other very well. <laughs> and you just hear like yeah they can bleed it. all over themselves I'll sit up here where there's no place. just hear me going yep uh, Genevieve will shake you awake <laughs> so you can continue answering her questions and then do you every... answer the majority of her questions you don't have to do it in character you just say yes or no I do like a half heart like <laughs> you get enough out of him that you actually are able to know everything that as players heard what happened to him. He mutters all of it in a half days. <laughs> Who would like to try to roll psychoanalysis to calm down the doctor? Not okay. me. I... I'm sleeping, so no. <laughs> I don't even I, have that skill. I, 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 I was going to say, I, I have a one in it, but I can click it and see what happens. I mean, yeah. I, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, oh, so boy. Jenny will direct her stream of questions to the doctor. Uh, <laughs> and not too much. 25's not terrible. Let's see what, uh, see what like Aubrey gets. I do have a lot of luck points to play with, so if it's close, I might be able to burn luck. Let's take a look. Okay. Ooh, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. I will burn nine points of Don't love. Don't forget to check that for the raise. I will. Yeah, Doc, you're able to come out of your fugue state. Now you're back to everything. It'll be fine. Wow. Oh boy. Hey, this is just a sign that everything works out for the better. I think I liked her the other way before. <laughs> Turns now up the radio. Now you claim you did this. You, you, you fixed the doctor. You're the best. Yeah, no, of course. Totally. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to bring it up right this second, but I'm definitely going to talk about that time that I, essentially, you know. Psychoanalyze the psychoanalyst. Psych yeah, exactly. So, you're back in town now. See, anyone can be anything if they just believe in themselves. <clears throat> Where we Hello. Like actually, egg. actually, that that's it, that's actually not true, Doctor. I'm a, I've actually trained <laughs> under some of the best um, psychotherapists in. You guys dropped me off at a hospital. In Massachusetts, um, mm -hmm. I spent um, several years actually under mm -hmm. their tutelage. Ever, do you have yeah. like a list of platitudes <laughs> that you're just kind of like reading off? Because that's impressive. <laughs> that many. <laughs> I mean, secret. Oh, <laughs> do you? Can I have them? Will you share? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Ever's just pulling from experience. 
being told said things. That's what I would do. Oh wait, that was to me. I thought that was to yeah, Steve yeah. with the lying. Oh shit. Uh, no, that was to you with the with the psycho babble, <laughs> which you're very good at. I liked my trained under the best psychotherapists in all of Massachusetts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the reason though that you were able to glean so much information from them is because mm. that you believed you could. Oh. oh. See, it all boils down I don't, to I a don't know, Doctor. Attitude. It was a lot harder than you're letting on. It really took, you know, uh -huh. yeah. an, an, no, an but advanced see, ability it, to it's slowly raising the and... radio. It is hard audio. to believe in yourself because everyone wants you to, you know, believe in this. Well, can you make it louder, Pete? <laughs> Like you Jenny, actually turn the radio reach on? Reach over and crank. Jenny crank will reach it. over and crank, crank it. Shit. You go to crank the radio and you're like, you got the rock station? And it's because you cranked it. Massively loud, booming voice of a preacher man. Oh, no. And he says unto us, we exhort you all, my children, to listen. You think it's preaching at first until you realize. Talking oh, about... At first you're like, that's a preacher channel, and you're like, that's a really weird old preacher channel, that's a really weird old strict preacher channel. Did he say, our lord, the king in yellow? When he says, no. uh, before he hears that, oh, Barnabas is like, oh, who the fuck put this on AM station? God damn it, he goes to turn, switch it off, and then he hears, like, the king in yellow, and he's just, like, listening. <laughs> you know, I've, I've got a hard time believing that this king is so bad because yellow is such a positive color. It's the color of the sun and flowers oh, and, you know? He's very bad. I mean, but deep down, there has to be some good. Otherwise, he would not like yellow. Okay, you are weird, but Jesus. Five Christ. minutes later, before, right, right before, once again, Barnabas is about to turn the radio off. And he exhorts his dear flock to ensure that we purge the sinner and the deviants from the island. And lists off your names. They want to help Change us get home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Barnabas is like, yeah, they do. Like, we're gonna die, guys. We're gonna die. These guys are made of Why? fucking worms. What do you? Why? What can we do against that? I can tell you. So worms really love compost, and what's really amazing is the fact that worms are really good for our environment. Barnabas, you're driving. Of circle of life. Are you, you going to take this poor mangled dude to the ready care on the island? Or hey, if there is else? one, sure. There is one, Drop yes. him off before we go to the, hot, the uh, library. Uh, you pull up to the... Hold on, where did I put that? Don Ardetto with the best hydrate redemption ever. <laughs> <laughs> if you are following chat <laughs> there it is Manitou Island Emergency Medical Services you pull up in front of it there's no cars in the parking lot and in the fog you can see the sign is flickering on and off this is your stop Captain Crash we got some research to do you asshole. And I get out. And I go to the med, med, pretty med. And when I'm in there, I'm like, can I see that uh, tool there you got? You open the door, and there's no one at the desk, and the place is a mess. Papers oh everywhere, stuff overturned. This is a regular thing. It's not, it has nothing, nothing supernatural going on here. It's just how it regularly is. <laughs> you can see inside when he opens the door the rest of you before you pull away. And I, I think it, there's usually a bell. I ring the bell, and I'm like, ring, ring, like. Uh, from somewhere deeper in, so you walk into this particular facility, and it's at the little heated entry area for a cold state. And then immediately inside of that is, you know, if this was a hospital, it would be where the uh, volunteer candy stripers give out information. It's like that kind of big rotunda desk, except this is just the desk for this place. And then there's a lobby that goes around it with chairs stacked up and typical hospital couches and hospital little TVs. And then uh, everything behind that's behind closed doors. 
Uh, the lights are flickering on and off. Couches are ripped and shredded in places. TVs are broken. Most of the computers are tossed around and paper is everywhere. Jeez. From somewhere deeper inside when you ring the bell uh, and behind the closed doors, you hear a weird noise. Like... <laughs> what the fuck? Jesus, can I get a fucking break one of these days? <laughs> Jesus. Is there any, like, what, medical supplies, like, where I'm at? What do the rest of you do? Seeing him banging a, a, a bell, and he's like... And he just, like, slams the desk and is cur clearly cursing to himself. Don't worry, I can fix this. I handle hospital staff all the time. So you're pretty gonna go in with him? I pretty much can run... I pretty much run a hospital, you know, before I got to the island, so... Okay, here. Let's go take a look. So, the, what about the other three of you? Stay in the car. I don't want to go into a clinic. I hate blood. Bye. Doc? Uh, oh, uh, I'm going to stay in the car because I wish to try and help Barnabas get over his fear of blood with positivity and like, oh, encouragement. I'm sorry. I, I can't hear you over the ACDC blasting, Doctor. You're going to have to talk louder. There you know, music no is really healing. The only radio station you can get is preachy one. Everything else is static. Oh, fuck this place. I put in a tape. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about you, Genevieve? You probably have a lot of questions about what's going on in there. Uh, yeah, so you said that we, we could see that it was empty? Yeah, and trashed. And you can see Aubrey get out, Mom get out and go inside. Yeah, so, uh... Jenny will just be like, what's going on? Why is there nobody in there? Do you think he needs help? He probably needs help. We should go help him, shouldn't we? And she will follow up. on his sunshades. <laughs> Pop some gun. So the three of you that are now in the lobby, uh, to answer your question, Joshua, you know where it is because you come to this island a lot. You know which of those doors has their little mini pharmacy. And for you, Aubrey, you're able to see uh, a random entry card that you wear around your neck if you were staff, tossed in the corner. Okay. Uh, I will uh, pick that up and just be like, you know what? Usually when this happens, um, you know, just they're in the back. Uh, I'm taking a break or maybe a staff meeting, so we're just going to go ahead and go back there. No worries. I can, I'll can. i get us through here. I know exactly how to handle these people. Like, I, Don't worry. Don't worry, Joshua. I'll get you the help that you need. I got you. And I'll take up the badge and go to you know, if they have the, the the door that you have to scan or, you know, press the button to get approved to go in, I'll... I will act like this is my hospital, and I know this place through and through, and I will lead Joshua further into the... I don't think that's a good definite idea. Definite not death trap. So, the three of you swipe the door and head deeper in. Uh, it is Come completely on, Joshua, dark in I here. know what I'm doing. It is completely dark in here. God, I'm and you start feeling this. around for, you know, the light switch. And as Genevieve comes in behind you, uh, the door snicks shut. And that makes the lights automatically pop on. You know, like fluorescence where they make that little buzz noise and pop on one at a time. Mm -hmm. And as the lights come up, you see first one person and then you realize it's a crowd of people just standing there in really awkward poses, completely frozen in place. <laughs> dressed in old-timey nurse outfits with their faces completely covered in dirty rags with old-timey nurse hats. And as the lights pop on and the door makes a noise, they all react and twist towards you, making that weird noise I just made. Guys, I think we need to leave. And that's where we pause for break. Oh. Oh, no. Uh, oh, God. That was fucking nuts. <laughs> All right. So, audience, go nowhere. We will return at uh, ten forty-four Eastern time. Ten minutes. Oh. All right. That was nuts. Here we go. Holy shit.
And we have returned. So far. Joshua made his way back to the group after being saved and then questioned and then abandoned by Special Forces Hit Squad of some kind. Kidnapped by cultists. Made a very costly escape. And the rest of the party made their way back to town with Joshua and Joe and are trying to stop to get medical care when they realize these are not all as they should be at the ready quick care. The ready care quick clinic. So. The candy stripers with the rags covering their faces. Mm. Block your way in a crowd, frozen in place, but obviously attracted to any noise. Yeah, I forgot about them. Uh, Jenny will just say very loudly, Who are you? God, what? Don't do that. Perfect. They react Don't more excitedly. Why? They react more I excitedly. Like, <gasps> and, right, and they lunge towards you, and they're all holding sharp pointing things. Ooh! <laughs> he just calls in here and actually tries to, like, scissors and scalpels. It. Oh no, you don't want to collect these. <laughs> and one of them, the nearest Genevieve, launches in. Uh, swipes above your head, misjudging your height. Take some of your hair with her, though. Hmm. And then Joshua, roll luck. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> roll luck, you said? Yep. Thirty-three. Uh, you managed to grab a hold of the wrist, not the blade of the scalpel. However, uh, the nurse gets real excited, and the, all of the nurses take a step closer to the group. But the nurse gets real excited and comes up with her other hand, which is holding a hypodermic needle. Mm. Yay! And injects you. <laughs> Can you deeper, please? <laughs> Let's see. Can I try to like swing her that way? And first, I got to roll on my chart to see what was in that needle. Oh uh, that needle had Dilaudid in it. Oh, fuck. Let's see. Full dosage. Dilaudid. <sighs> Contraction. Morphine. Oh no. Oh, oh not this again. Make you Major, big red stop sign. Cool. Oh, fuck. Uh. Okay. I'm taking a penalty die to everything right now and can barely walk because you're about to pass out hard on your face. Ooh. Everything is swimmy, and the edges of your vision is cloudy. You're also pretty sure you should be nauseous, but you can't feel anything, so you don't care. Oh, shit. Yikes. You kind of let go of the nurse and just sway in place. Oh. Hmm. Guys, I think we need to leave. Ah. You okay? What's wrong? What was in I, that nurse? Can the nurse I just make a noise I, and take a step closer because you're still talking? I want to grab uh, Jenny if I can. I'm gonna do the uh -huh. hand over the mouth thing. Okay. And just you know, uh, just be like. Is the needle still in me? By the way. Yes, you can. Keep, you can keep that hypodermic. Yeah, I'm gonna like take it out and just put it in my pocket. Oh. Jenny, right now, if you talk, you something very bad's gonna happen. Okay, so just need to be quiet, quiet. quiet. Oh. What's gonna happen? And I want to just like hold like her mouth quiet. I'll answer any question. I'll answer 
all the questions you have when we get home, but for right now, you cannot ask a single question. Understand? Shake your head. Uh, so from, from Rachel's perspective, in the write-up that I received, uh, for this, uh, particular insanity, mm-hmm. like, she gets mad if nobody answers her questions. So, uh, I, I think she's gonna try and, like, bite Aubrey's hand. Like, <laughs> not, not enough to do damage, but, you know, just the angry chomp, and then stamp her foot. Make a constitution roll, Aubrey. Mm. Er, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wrong game. Uh, <laughs> There's still con. Oh, it is con in this game. You're right. Good. Roll that. Failed. It hurts like a mad bitch, and you like over your mouth just for a second. Okay. Uh, and then Jenny will say uh, again very loudly, "I don't want to be quiet. I want to know what they are." Let's leave, please. <laughs> I will go. Like I. Four of the nurses are in, in the range of Aubrey and Genevieve. I and they go, are swiping. I go into stealth before they can get to me, please. Uh, well, the way this works is anytime you make noise, they swing at the sound and then stop. So you can stealth after the swings. You get nicked with a knife for two damage. Aubrey gets a hypodermic. Uh... It was an insulin injection. <laughs> what happens if you take insulin but don't need it? Well, remember how we, that all ties into the stories. Ask, uh, the horror author how that works out. Right? Yep! I Didn't the island make me diabetic to fit in with... It did, yes, Eric's? but luckily it's not you that got the injection. It's Genevieve. You got a knife. Oh, I thought you said the other way, sorry. Right. Oh, wait. So the child minded woman is now on a sugar high? Correct. <laughs> Yikes. So, like, you immediately go to the bad part of the high, where all you want to do is throw up and die and pee a lot. Your okay. mouth is dry, you're jittery, head hurts. So yes, now you may make a stealth roll, Aubrey. Okay. Um, where does she go? It's right in front of me. By the way, am I still standing? Yeah, but not for long. Okay. I got a hard success. Okay. Um, you're able to get halfway through. The candy stripers. What do you do, Genevieve? Uh, I I'm looking up hyperglycemia. Um, yeah, I think uh, uh Genevieve will ask, uh, and she will try to be allowed, but probably won't have the strength to do it. She's like, "Why do I feel so bad?" <laughs> Make a uh, con check with with a penalty die, uh, Joshua. Okay. Uh, uh, con. That didn't work. Try again. That just rolled. That just displayed the number. It didn't roll it. Oh, oh same thing. Click the other. Color. There it goes. Oh, no. Nope. Serious? Uh, the nurses don't go for you, though, Genevieve, because even in the middle of you saying the sentence, very squeakily dry throat, Joshua falls down. Wham! Oh, God, no. Just flat out unconscious. The nurses rush forward and stab and prick and jam and inject the air where he was standing. One of them trips over him and falls. <laughs> he is out hard. You clear out the other side, Aubrey. They're not paying attention to you. You take that moment to pull. 
Okay, and I wanted to go deep into the hospital. Yeah, you're you're be, you're past them now. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go deeper into the clinic or hospital, find where they keep the rooms, beds, anything like that, where they have monitors. And since power has been turned back on, you said with lights and stuff. Just um, in that one room. Okay. Um, are any of the monitors still on from like a generator since those are usually on a separate power source? The generator doesn't seem to be on. Which okay. makes you wonder why the lights came on in that room, yes. Sure. Okay. Um... I then... Okay, so I look around, I see that, um... Are you trying to make noise? Yes. Is that your plan? Yes, I'm trying to go find equipment and things that Crash are... Crash carts have their own uh, internal power batteries. Okay, then, yeah, that's what I'm trying to find. So that I can turn on one of those, and then I can get the beeps, the sounds, things like that, turn on the, like, the monitor, mm -hmm. and with no one connected to it, it should be a flat line, and then that'll make a big sound. Make three luck checks, Genevieve. In the time it takes Aubrey to turn on enough crash cards to distract the nurses. Good start. Good seven success. Ah, uh, okay. Apparently you have to uh, space out your clicks. Oh, jeez. Come on. Mm. You gonna luck that one or keep it? Mm. It's ten off. Um, yeah, I'll luck that one. Okay, one more. Uh, let me edit my current luck. There we go. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm really glad I lucked the second one. Knife this time for three damage, not another needle. It's probably good. Okay. And then... The, you've heard the noise get steadily louder and you're like, what are you doing, Aubrey? Aubrey, where'd you go? Aubrey! Uh, yeah, um, uh, so can I, so I hear the noise that Aubrey's making. Yes. Uh, can I have enough presence of mind to drag Joshua with me? Like, Aubrey, we're coming! Once, uh, Aubrey isn't answering your questions, so while Aubrey is doing it, you get mad and make a lot of noise, that's why you're getting attacks. However, once the machines make more noise than you, and they burst into that part of the clinic, yes, you can drag Joshua with you. Okay. Yeah, so the three of you can now roam the hospital for X number of minutes. You don't know how long before they realize, before they stab the machines to death. Okay. Hopefully we will hear that, though. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, you'll, you'll hear the lack of noise. I'm not. Plus, down, I'm assuming so. Aubrey was smart enough to put them pretty far from the room you need to be in. It's yeah. You're gonna give was, Aubrey that one. It was literally my plan was to try to do it far enough away. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you make your way, unless you have another plan, you make your way to the medication room. Yes. Um, and you collect plenty of generic first aid equipment. But you're standing, staring at a wall of medicines, and you're like. Cooler medicine, not cooler medicine, fancy long names. Huh. Gonna need a first aid or medicine roll from you to see if you get any useful stuff or just randomly grab everything. Okay, um, I can do a first aid. Uh, can uh, Jenny also make a first aid roll because she will be like, oh, what's this? Mommy, how do you pronounce this thing? Why do I feel so bad? Will this make me feel better? <laughs> yes, you can. Okay. Oh, no. Two failures. Anybody lucking those? That's a lot for Steve to luck. Ugh. Yeah. You'll still get medicine. You just won't know what you're getting. Um, I'm knocked out, so... Yeah, you're out hard. Just, you double you, you double narcotic yep. by injection. I would have been very useful for this, too. <laughs> Ditto. Out of curiosity, how much luck is everyone sitting at? Uh, I've got 63. 53. I'm just below Genevieve with 62. Thank you, Mayor Kimchi. I will take your name. 
I got 50. Okay. Um, you know, why not? Let's blow stuff. Do what we need to. 50, 60, 70, 80, that's 33. I will do that. Okay. But it's to make so. sure that we get the medicine and, like, first aid stuff that we need when we get back to the doctor. Right. Can, can, can I jump on this grenade because uh, my difference is smaller than yours and so uh, I'm willing to spend that luck wait what I think uh, that's Aubrey for sure yeah that, that <laughs> I, I would have to spend less luck to get down okay. to a regular success oh uh, sure if you want to I... yeah okay okay yeah, okay. So then, yes, Aubrey, or Genevieve will spend the luck points. And you are able to get the following things. One. Eight D6s. Nine, uh, nine. nine doses of medicine that will allow you to ignore wound penalties. Hmm. Which right now, like, the only reason Joshua isn't suffering massive penalties right now is he's been morphined out forever. This won't, this will give you the ability to ignore wound penalties without the side effects that Joshua is suffering. So, nine of those. And eight of your first aid uses, you will have a bonus die roll with. And you have enough first aid equipment to basically survive the rest of the final act that comes next. Awesome. So hopefully somebody recorded all that. Um, I, I I did not, but I could if we need to. Found it. Log it. Um, can you do it one more time? Nine doses of ignore wound penalty. Eight doses of bonus die to first aid rolls. Eight doses, bonus die, first aid. Got it. Okay. And then you slip out of the hospital, unless you have something else you want to try to do before the nurses break the machines. So I hear them break the machines? No, they haven't yet. But if you leave now, you're fine. If you want to do something else here first, you might not be. Um... Ooh. How's my... Oh, I almost forgot something. And five doses of knock out a bad guy. Oh, nice. That's useful. Useful. I like that. Five doses. Injected tranquilizer. That do? Knock out... I'm just knock out bad guy. Okay. All right. Um... And everyone looks at Barnabas. No insulin. <laughs> I. Barnabas is on the car still air guitaring to Blue Easter Cold, so. Oh! Jenny? I need you to do me a favor. What do you need, Mommy? I need you to go back to the car with. I hit one of you the one who shall not be mentioned with, Joshua. with Joshua. I wanted to say his actual name because of the J. Um, I need you to go back to the car with Joshua and ask Barnabas and the doctor how they're doing. Can you go ask them how they're doing for me? Okay, but why? Be because it's important that you do that and follow up with people and make sure they're okay. I'm sure they're all alone and they really want to I really want to make sure they're okay. But I'm going to catch up with you in a little bit. So you stay in the car. You find out what they're doing. You can find out how they're doing, what they're doing, okay? What they plan on doing after now. Go, go, okay? Go. Okay, so you want me to find out how they're doing and what they're doing, right? Yes, and then I'll be there in just a minute. Don't come back in here, okay? What should I do if they're doing bad? Ask them why. <laughs> a lot. Okay. 
perfect. Are you gonna just let Genevieve drag this bulk of a man, or are you gonna like try to help her somehow? Is he like Genevieve isn't actually a child, but still, Josh was a heavy dude. I'm, yeah. I was kind of thinking Genevieve is a outdoorsy hiker person. I thought she could I, actually do this. I have a, I have a decent strength. Outdoorsy um, hiker people still have a hard time pulling 200 pounds of dead weight 100 yards. <laughs> Firemen's carry that thing. Yeah, I'm just by the ankles. <laughs> there a wheelchair Genevieve. anywhere? <gasps> That's okay. Yeah, I was about to make Genevieve roll to realize we just need to put him in a wheelchair or a stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> Just okay. Don't, just don't get the squeakiest one. The door pops open and Genevieve comes out, pushing Joshua completely flat unconscious in a wheelchair. Rolls up to the cars, kind of lets go of Joshua, who rolls to the side and stops and just peppers you with questions. What are you doing, Aubrey? Oh, so I, I just want to clarify, Aubrey is doing exactly as instructed. How are you? Are you doing okay? Are you injured? Is there anything you need? Can we help? Can Aubrey help? Do you know how to defeat demon nurses? <laughs> <laughs> Don't fear the reaper. And oh, is, is he better now? Uh, he, he doesn't he looks look better. Like he's passed out. No one acknowledges demon nurses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do you want to acknowledge demon nurses? <laughs> So what are you going to try to do, Aubrey, and hopefully not get stabbed to death? I, using stealth, quiet, listening for the monitor, all of that stuff, I want to try to find the records room. Uh, are the records here or digital? Perfect. Hmm. And I want to go find, um... A beauty. Yeah, I want to go find one of the, like... Uh, again, working in a hospital one of the computers that's kind of behind the, the in the nurse's station, kind of behind where you would check in, where they would do the coding um, and stuff like that, because that would probably have most of the information stored on it, as opposed to you know, any of the other ones. Uh, make an electronics rule. This is gonna go terribly. I don't have... <laughs> so again, I don't... I. I Ultimately, I just want to rip out the hard drive if I can. That's what the roll is for. Okay. Well, in the here. tower, the files are in the computer. Electronics roll, I mean, yeah, here we go. This is, yeah. Oh, crap, I'm in build character. Okay. Close! I will spend it. Uh, 15 okay. 15 points. In that case, you only need a normal stealth roll to exit the hospital because you're not clunking around with the whole tower. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Uh, it puts me down to four. Did she make the computer use roll? He was a, she, she was able to figure out how to unplug the hard drive, yes. I thought it was going to be that scene from Zoolander where they like take the monitor. And oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If she computer. failed the roll, I was going to make her take the monitor out of the tower and then try to stealth past the nurses, yes. <laughs> Uh, yep, just a stealth I, roll for Aubrey. I, sorry, I, I can't... Okay, sorry, just messing with the character sheet because I was trying to click electronics. Uh, stealth roll, here we go. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Uh, regular you slip success. out. Back out into the fresh fog air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fresh fog air, love it. Uh, yeah, so with the hard drive, I will sneak out, maybe take like a side window, just something like that, and slip out, walk past, and go back to the car. What you see is Genevieve peppering the doctor with endless questions, not even stopping to breathe. Perfect. Barnabas is air guitaring, and uh, Joshua is slowly rolling down a hill away from the building in his wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do feel like Jenny would... Uh at some point be like, hey, you're a doctor, right? Why do I feel so bad? Why am I so thirsty? And she'll just list her various symptoms of <laughs> insulin overdose. And, um... Which you're able to figure out, Doc. It's pretty... 
Yeah, you, sweetie, you have, you're having, you've got too much insulin in your body. What, uh, what, what happened in there? And do you need a hug? I've heard that helps wonders. Yes. Okay. And Dr. Layla gives her a big ol' hug. Come check. <laughs> what? For who? For, for Genevieve. I was given doom. I have to use doom grossly. <laughs> All right, well, I'm really good at this. Mm. <laughs> oh, crit success! <laughs> wow. The hug squeezes you a little too hard. And you throw up. Pick your target because you got a crit success. <laughs> <laughs> it can be it can be Aubrey, Barnabas, or the Doctor. Mm. Your choice. <laughs> Barnabas. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, uh, wait, wait, no. Uh, oh. I'm sorry. Can I take that back? Uh, Barnabas's car's paint job. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yo, you, 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 you're grounded, young lady. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I will slowly go get Barnabas to stop him from rolling down the hill and making it a thing, and bring him back to the car, and just be like, or not Barnabas. Aubrey brings uh, Joshua, Joshua back, yes. Yeah. Barnabas. <laughs> Pop the train. You hear a bunch of commotion. Like you don't see that happen, Aubrey. You just hear Barnabas freak out. And you don't know why. I'll I'll roll up and just be like, you know, when kids throw up, it's not usually dramatic like an adult. It's just fluids, no noise. All right. Up up to the window. Up to the window. Not knocking. Not ma- not to try to make any sound. Just be like, Barnabas. Barnabas is not looking at you. Because he's looking at the backseat. Look 2020 funding. Supra! What the fuck? I just had that detailed! Then I'll open the door. Or attempt to open the door. Did you leave it locked? Uh. Roll percentile. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, roll luck. Me? Oh, it was a luck? <laughs> Your Made choice. Ah, uh, sure. It was locked. Oh. I mean, we are in, like, scary fog land, so probably, yeah. Okay, does me trying to open the door alert him to me being there? Uh, it would, except he's too busy yelling. However, he's got one of those punch the key in. And you just look at it, and you get really mad, and you punch the key in, the door unlocks. It's your husband's car. Of course you know the fuck. How did you get it? Oh, gosh. What's going on? Turns on the music. Barnabas, just, just shut up. Okay, there was a load of demon nurses in there, but I was successfully able to defeat them all pretty much single-handedly because this guy apparently just can't handle whatever it is that they injected him with. Okay, so I successfully was able to um, put uh, Jenny on the right track and put her attention where it needed to be. Yes, I saved us all. Open the trunk. Open the trunk. Open it. Plunk. And I roll Joshua to the Barnabas, back. you feel like being a smart ass? A little it's bit. It's a hatchback. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I just want to hear Barnabas scold you. You know this doesn't have a trunk, dear. It's just kind of motion towards the back like, it's open. Go ahead. And I'll dump Joshua in the back. You kind of push Joshua in the back, but it doesn't have a trunk, so you're just pushing him over the seat the hard way instead of putting him from the side. I thought this was a tiny little sports car. It is. Okay. You don't get it. You, that, that's why it's harder to get him in from the rear. Okay. Normally, you'd push him in from the side and put the seat forward, you know. It's a Supra, honey. A Supra, okay? Right. It's not a caravan. It's a or Supra. If you, if and it has vomit really... on it. If Aubrey's really being mean, you could cram him into the little trunk space in the hatchback. Yeah. <laughs> I was literally trying to put Joshua in the trunk, since he's just a collapsed body at this point. So you have to fold him to do it, because it's not really a trunk, it's just a space behind the seat. And it's about a fold foot him like in laundry, every dimension too small for him. <laughs> so... Like know. this, like... <laughs> 
Like, we all haven't had to stuff a body in a trunk that's too small before. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going next? You know, if you just channel your inner origam origami artist and believe in yourself, I know you can fold that body. <laughs> All the votes go to ever ever <laughs> this week. <laughs> All right, driver, where are you taking them next? You, you know, I once uh, the library. You know, I once folded a normal piece of paper nine times. Uh, sure, sweetie. Yeah, Alan doesn't have a library. What purpose do you want a library for? Do I mean, there's there's books. In what, you know, the school has a place with books, but it's not really a library. So if you're looking for research, you want historical oh, societies or museums. Oh, I, I oh yeah, surprised yeah. surprised you're not picking car wash. <laughs> I wouldn't expect one to be here under the circumstances, so I'm not even bothering, but... <laughs> so, uh, you could go to the Manitou Island Historical Society, you could go to the uh, Toy Museum... Yeah, those are the only ones that really fit the criteria you're after. Closest one, then uh, we'll go to the museum first. That, that's the actual historical society is closer to where you physically are. Okay, we'll go there. Okay. And while they all get ready to go in, I'll just take out the sham wow in the back. And like, okay. <laughs> Clean it up as much as I can. Um. At least it's not blood. You find a hose attached to the side of the building, you can use that. Sure. So, Manitou Island Historical Society. Oh. Uh, once again, the parking lot is empty. Doesn't seem to be any power to the building. You haven't seen anyone at all in this whole time that you've been driving around. Remember how when you first got here, all the doors were open and people were missing? It's like that again. Except you can hear everything this time. Hmm. Did we shift back into the Demimond? Or are we if you still... did, it has an affected sound that you've noticed. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, okay. I heard the music coming out of my stereo, so we're not technically in the Demimond, but weird shit's still happening. I Make a cult roll and then a mythos roll, Eric. Make a cult first. Cool. Cult. Good at that. Hey, nice. that's an extreme success, my friend. Mythos. Make the mythos roll. I fucking oh, made cow. extreme mythos roll, my That's friend. Crazy. Now you're never gonna see that shit again. Nope. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Good job. Okay, but now this means that you've got to put the little ticky mark by Cthulhu Mythos. There is no ticky mark. Yeah, you can't. Oh. That. You can't increase. That one That's... is only increased by a GM. But you know, one of the I... ways a GM increases that. Small mercy. Critical successes. Uh... <laughs> Critical. Oh. Good job, Eric. <laughs> Yay! Add six points to your mythos. Oh six shit! Points from your sanity. <laughs> from your sanity cap, your maximum. Oh yeah. So my maximum now is oh shit, uh, seventy. I think it auto counts. Mine is 66. Oh, does it? Okay. Oh, yeah. the number of the beast. Is it? So. I can't. Oh. Uh, you realize, looking at the yellow sign you created. It's mesmerizing and it speaks to you. It's using the Demimon to fuel whatever unholy thing. Well, you know what the unholy thing is. The unholy statue that lies at the heart of the island is fueled off of the raw emotions of humans. It feeds off your emotions. And every time it siphons the energy off of your emotions, it pulls you closer to permanently being in this alternate world. It's trying to pull the island out of Earth into somewhere deep in the blackness of the endless void. And you have poured enough emotion in as players that you are essentially permanently halfway now. Some parts of the island will go deeper into the Demimon and some will go farther away, but there's no longer a separation. It's all the same now. Is is this from him practicing on the legal pad? Yeah. The sign spoke to him, yes. <laughs> I'm just like... I think I understand. And I try to explain it to him in this, the best uh, way that I can. Probably in a very, you know, 
frenzied manner because I just, you know, lost six maximum sanity. Does that mean my but, current sanity is my maximum sanity? If my maximum sanity is above my, oh, sorry, if my current sanity is max is higher than my maximum sanity? No, the current doesn't. So the current stays higher, but when you lose those points, they can't come back. They can't come back. Wow. So right. Barnabas gives the big explanation that he just did, and I'll just be like. Okay, you're just not figuring that out? I figured that out hours ago. Oh, of course you did! You had this all in the bag, didn't you? You could have done all these things back then, but you didn't. You just had to do it now, right? It just goes on and on with you. I can't help... I, I, That's I, okay, I'm just, sweetie. I'm just, just glad... You keep feeding the Demimon with your emotions. You're doing a bang-up job. Uh, uh Genevieve. Make yourself a spot hidden check. There we go. Okay. Oh. Doc, make a spot hidden check. Do I wake up for any of this? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Soon. Okay. What I won't let you miss down. anything important. Nope. Into the okay. Fail. Never coming back. Okay. So you're parked in front of the historical society now. Clean off the side of the car. What should we do? Should we go in? Should we wake up Joshua? Joshua, why are you asleep? Genevieve. Oh my goodness. Him. Genevieve, right after Barnabas gets really annoyed at his wife and goes off on her, you have a question for your mommy. Why did it get so quiet, mommy? I what don't like it when it's quiet. <laughs> As you realize, now that you're permanently here, having any strong emotional reaction pulls you closer. Uh, Genevieve really likes noise, and she's very upset that it is quiet, and she will do her best to make sound. So, at this exact moment, who's in the car, who's out of the car? We know that Barnabas is the pulling car. the hose towards the car. We know that Joshua's in the back still. What sure. about you three? Um, unless we were heading into the building actively, I am probably still in the car. Had not got that far yet. Okay. Honestly, probably the same. I, I last I heard, we had just pulled up. So, yeah. So I didn't roll. I'm assuming Genevieve stays where mom is. Uh, well, so I, I did just narrate that I was, like, trying to shake Joshua awake. Oh, so you'd be out of the car in the... Okay. Yeah. And you opened the hatch. Oh, even better. So, uh, you failed your spot hidden roll when you slipped even closer to the Demimon, so that once again, when some ho eldritch horror from one of Barnabas's terrifying books comes charging out of the woods, Ooh. silent as a ninja. And none of you notice until it hits the Supra, causing it to slide and spin... And hit Barnabas and Genevieve, sending them flying. Smack! Ah! The hose goes flying through the air and soaks Joshua, who then wakes up, screams, and falls out of the Supra. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck happened? Joshua, uh, you recovered five hit points, but you lost one from getting gravel in the face. <laughs> Genevieve and Barnabas. And if you each take four damage from getting bit slapped by a car. As something oh, wow. with something that's like thirteen feet tall, with got like a deer skull for a face and too many horns, dressed in a robe, anthropomorphoid, it hits the car with its horns and spins it spinning. Also, dents and tears the paint all over that side of your car. <laughs> so I'm at one hit point. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I... Genevieve is going to need one of those uh, please let me not feel the pain injections. Uh, I I think we forgot that many of us actually needed to heal up as well from last session. So, <laughs> Genevieve, make a con roll. Oh dear. I didn't forget. <laughs> I healed. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm the only one. Made it. You are not knocked out. Okay. Uh, she is crying very loudly. The horned monstrosity turns his attention to Barnabas. I made you! I made you! And I can unmake you! Do you what do you yell at it besides that? 
I take the syringe out of my pocket and just start playing with it. Uh, I'm just trying to remember like my own book. <laughs> I'm just like, how did this fucking story end? Oh shit. <laughs> if, a, if a horned demon monster was charging Barnabas and he was too distracted to think about his book, what's the first thing he'd say after, no, stop? Stay? Stay? <laughs> It stops in its tracks and just looks at you expectantly, huffing violently. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck off! He points back to the woods or whatever. Go! It roars, Go now. And, it roars and stops stomping towards you. Oh shit. <laughs> so Apparently, bad. go away doesn't work. Ah. Uh... Yes, Audrey? So I was still in the car when it got rammed. So I yeah, like, you guys spun. just got yeah, but you didn't okay. get hurt. Okay, in, in the dock. So I'm looking out of the window. The monster's not paying attention yes. to me. I want to reach into the bag really quick and pull out one of the syringes, and with the combination of stealth brawl, I want the scene to be where him and the monster are doing the whole like what commands work, not work, and I want to run up behind this thing and jab it with the knockout bad guy syringe. Make a luck roll. Mm. No. 59 on a 43. Okay. Doc, make a luck roll. Boy. Okay, let's see. All the rolls start failing. <laughs> Both the Doc and Genev and, and Aubrey are like, yeah, one will totally do it for the evil monster. And Aubrey jams that needle into the back of the monster, and it just kind of turns around and looks at you like, really? Just the one? Whack! <laughs> you needed like a half a dozen. Shit. It whaps you. And it sends what? you sailing for one point of damage as you get the side of the building. I yell at Barnabas. knocked out of you. What happened? What did you do in your book to get rid of this thing? You did not I'm have trying to, to subtract remember. that usage from your total, by the way. Okay. Thank you. How do you not know? You freaking wrote the damn shut thing. Up. Shut up. No, I'm not going to shut up. It stops roaring when you say shut up, Barnabas. <laughs> Stay. Stay there. Don't move. It stops Wait again. At the, at the thing. He looks over at the uh, the museum. Are the doors open or are they locked? Can't tell from here. Can't tell. He gets up slowly and he uh, brings out the uh, the yellow sign, and he's just like, he starts m moving slowly, never tearing his eyes off of the monster. He starts moving towards like the doors to the the museum. Okay. Does it heed my my commands? It's still staying, but you can see it's getting impatient again. You can't make it stay indefinitely. It has to have a purpose, and you think, because you made really hard crit rolls, I'm going to give you a freebie. You have to direct it to do violence, or you'll lose control. It won't heal and stay and be nice. It has to kill and destroy and make. Destroy that car. Open the doors. He points to the museum doors. Let's see if he Roar! Can Smash, shatter. Yeah, it goes head first into the doors and just wrecks them. How bad is my super right now? Is it still drivable? Oh yeah, it's just got a real bad dent and paint scratches all over. that side of the car is ruined now. Because between that and Genevieve, oh, no. uh, that car is is going to need thousands of dollars of work. <laughs> uh, a vote to jump back into the super and peel the fuck out and get out of here right now, right now. You could Any send diggers? it to go kill a cultist. Yeah, if we could find them. But this is... I, I need to know what the, how to direct it now, now. <laughs> okay, it comes back out of the building. Is like, anything you know, else you know, around you know that how, I can you occupy it with other than us? You know how, like, sliding doors sometimes have that metal bar in the middle and one's open, one's closed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That bar survived its attack, but neither of the doors did. On the way back out, it hits the bar, and it's just like, Ugh. Ugh. and it keeps pushing on the bar till the bar makes a horrible squealing noise and breaks. So, oh, is there something that you can like give it that carries the scent 
of the government agents who fucked up. Or no, they didn't fuck up Joshua. They were actually very nice to Joshua. But just be like, yeah, but like, actually, sniff it, boy, sniff it. Okay, we go get them. We, we took the compass and all of the other equipment, like the book bag, yeah. from the guy who got executed on the cross. So I'm just like, take the book bag off. <laughs> uh, find those and kill them. He, as he says, and he like tosses it the the book bag. Tears off into the woods with the book bag. Everything that was inside of it is no longer yours. Oh, he, he doesn't understand that much. It's just like destroy, and it's like okay, destroys whatever it's nearby. Oh no no no! It takes the book bag and takes off into the woods to find its targets. Oh okay, I thought it just <laughs> it took it with like, it. Destroy and it just rip. <laughs> okay, it no, needs it took reference it with it. material. Yep. <laughs> Excellent idea, Rachel. Well, you can uh, kind of just go inside now. Guys, let's go inside. He's just like... <sighs> Barnabas, that was... Uh, you've, you've possibly saved my life. Uh, well... He doesn't respond yeah, to that. He's still on the ground, just, like... just falling, by the way. <laughs> I... Jenny, are you okay? Or... I, I don't remember how Jenny the is clearly the not Hitler okay. <laughs> yeah, Jenny is just like, it hurts. Why does it hurt so bad? What happened to me? What what happened to the car? Well, Genevieve, it... since this is the second time she's gotten this close to one, can't put off penalties forever. Genevieve holds up her left arm and says, I don't like it. Bone sticking out. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oof. We're gonna no, I'm um, nope, nope. I'm just like nope, not nope. Mm -mm. Yeah, she's like, is is this a broken bone? How do you fix a broken bone, <laughs> Doctor Layla? How do you Ask fix your my mother. arm? Can anyone fix my arm? I... Mommy, make my arm better. Bottom <laughs> of the I... arm is just flopping loose. I actually pull Barnabas aside, and I am interspersing with positive talk of you know, if you were a brave dad for, I mean, a brave person for. Genevieve and and coupling it with the the psychotherapy see if I can get him to be okay with blood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Genevieve I... if you can psych a psychoanalysis role will temporarily suppress the problem I can fix your arm ooh hard success but it's she, good she talks you down Barnabas you're like fine just this one time and then give her a hug and tell her everything's gonna be okay. I need your support here, Dad. I can. I'm gonna fix give you a hand. I'm gonna squirm. I'm gonna give you a hand. Don't expect an arm in return. No. I will take care of the arm. So whoever's the assistant 46. rolls first. Okay, now you roll, Joshua. You'll be the primary. Yep. Forty-six out of sixty-five. Gonna be first aid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Oh, roll, shit. Roll the bonus oh, die because of your assistant. <laughs> wow. Okay, oh, good. regular. Wow. Oh, Thank God for the assistant. Barnabas saved your ass that time. Damn. Yep. <laughs> They're able to set the arm, and you are able to recover four hit points, Genevieve. Bone sticking out like this way, right? He's about to turn yeah. it more that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Let me get a better look. Um... Also, subtract one use of please take the pain away. That's gone now, or else uh, Genevieve is the penalty die for everything. Will do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's go in the. Why are we here, anyways, guys? Like, that was a deer horner guy. I can't believe that just came out. Oh, my God. Okay. W what's the use? Why are we here? Do we know? I, I, as I. Well, you were probably asleep when I was explaining everything but every time we have an overly emotional response the demimon reels us in it does it slowly but surely but it still reels us into its world we're somewhere around halfway there now which is why this is happening still despite everything else that we've done see this is why we remain positive because it doesn't like positive feelings it's, no so how no, do we get no. out how do we fix it? How do we maintain positive feelings when we're all dead? Oh. <laughs> anyway. Mythos roll Barnabas with the bonus die from your critical success earlier. Roll that bonus die. Oh! 
Six. Uh, I'll spend the one point to make it extreme. <laughs> okay. Three. Right, so uh, the key is to figure out how this idol was empowered in the first place so we can unempower it so we can stay on Earth. Plus, we should probably find out where these cultists are because they're absolutely the ones powering it. We probably have to kill them all. Or otherwise take away their ability to empower the evil idol. The key is the idol. idol. And because it's from Stop another it. world, made out of metal from the stars, you can't blow it up or shoot it. You have to un depower it. To render it, uh, render it uh, powerless. Inert. Inert. We have to take the power away from the artifact, from the statue that we found in the dig site, and those cultists are the key to it. We have to find them and somehow get the power away from the statue so that we don't get sucked into this freaking world that exists the out there. Yeah, Bart in the historical really society, you can probably tell, I mean, if you're lucky, you may have a locked archive of some kind that will tell you what happened the last time this happened on the site. Right, yes. Right when there was a king in yellow before. Right, we know part of this. We know that the statue holds many things, and we all and we figured that out. I figured that out already. We know this. Hey, don't, we also don't you know, know that the statue? No, no. Don't you know that the statue is actually Angel Michael, and we should actually listen to everything he says and do what he says? Like, how do you all not know that? We need to figure out what the statue wants, and we need to give it to the statue. Joshua you know? kind of plays with the. Uh... Shot it. Mm -hmm. thing and kind of pricks his fingers and shit. Well, guys, if that's true, let's go into this place and find something. There's got to be something of some sort. Also, Barnabas, you gave yourself an extreme success. Gain five more mythos points and lose five more permanent sanity. Oh my God. <laughs> five more? Damn, I'm up to 31. Plus five minus five. Two. Yes. Oh, man. Most mythos I think I've ever had ever. <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you are at the at definitely at the threshold of madness in any class of story. Yes. And remember, and wow. but, but remember, we also figured out we need the we need the crown and the scepter. It's, okay, well we have to get that. Let's uh, look this up. Let's go. Let's get it done. Get out of this place. <laughs> I need major therapy when I leave. First things <laughs> first. <laughs> First things first, make a group spot hidden, meaning the person with the best chance rolls through the group with a bonus die. I have that's an 81. Yeah, I don't think. Hidden. Yeah, you have. Uh, that's oh, you. that's all definitely you, buddy. you. I have a 50. Go ahead, uh, Joshua, with a bonus die if you need it. Okey doke. You don't need it? Uh, go ahead and roll it. You never know. You can do even better and get extreme. Okey doke. Give me Aubrey, didn't we figure out that the. The crown and scepter were in the historical society. Just building, click. Yeah, possibly? there you go. Can I spend the <laughs> luck to get an extreme success, or would it matter? It will matter. You get four points for it. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll spend. With the normal success, you find out that there is a locked archive room with a steel reinforced door with code. With a hard success, uh, you find the key card that somebody left in their desk when they're being sloppy one day. And with the extreme success, you realize it means more than key card. It also needs a punch code, which you find from someone else's desk. So yes, it mattered. Mm. Okay. You bypassed half your problem in one roll. <laughs> nice. Well, Joshua, guys, working as a team, you guys get into the archives with Joshua in the lead. Wow. The archives are entirely paper, and they're organized using uh, whatever system was in fashion for the decade. So... Do we need decimal system? You're probably going to want to uh, split this up. You're going to need not just library use. You're going to need uh, law. Which is Oh, I have both. That counts for bureaucracy in this game, figuring out the system. I have both. I have law, 60, and library use, 70. I have no law. I have a little bit of library use. Yeah, same. I have no law, but a little bit of library use. Twenty in library use and five in law. <laughs> what about Aubrey? Uh, I'm pretty much useless here. Five law and twenty library use. All right, Barnabas, it's all you. You're Which one law. do you want me to roll first? 
Uh, first roll the law to figure out the system because that may affect the library use roll. Oh, oh Jesus. Hey. Okay. Uh, what are they using here? <laughs> He's just like, <laughs> what is make your, this? Make your first library use roll. Nice, and man. make your second. Oh, I can make that into a hard, hard check. check. Hard for four, yes. And then make your second roll. Oh, for fuck's sake. And you would have had a penalty die on that one, but you don't need it. Okay. Actually, yeah, roll that penalty die. You could crit fail. Nope. Nope. <laughs> okay. Right. So. <laughs> um. So you're able to find very much uh, like so you're able to hmm. file, follow the paper trail over the course of several hours over which time the rest of you can rest up meaning you recover two sanity and two hit points each from being able to relax same for you Barnabas because you're just sitting oh. down looking at paper um, you're able to find out a few things but uh, most importantly you find out that there's a locked archive in the locked archive where like they don't want this information getting out my point this that one out no one, to, to them. Like, this, one no one finds, this one no one finds a key for but it's a metal lock box so you force it open I won't have to go for that okay. working together you Bang force it against the, box the wall open. yeah until it opens <laughs> right or something yeah however when you finally smash it open everything inside flies out I need you all to make luck rolls. Whoever does the worst gets to tell me. Oh, cool. Well, that's pretty bad. I failed by nine. Whoa. I got a 27. So you're probably nowhere near the worst. Yeah, I got nah, a 90. It's uh, Layla. Doctor, Layla yeah. got the worst? Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, among a bunch of papers and old deeds sealed in wax, and like a carved replica of the idol comes flying out, a bunch of weird gold coins come flying out. Like, they're all different shapes and sizes. They look like legit bullion, Spanish coins or English coins, you know. From mm. olden days on the high seas. And they all just kind of land on the floor, except one that hits on its side, spins around, catches the doc's eye as it refracts the light, and lands yellow sign side up. Make sanity roll. <laughs> Me? Yep. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Oh, look at that. Oh, dang. You lose no sanity because you're like, Nope, and kick that shit into the corner real hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, going through those papers. Barnabas, I kick it with positivity. <laughs> <laughs> and Aubrey tells you, I'm glad, aren't you glad I saved you from that coin? And that Aubrey never even saw it until after you kicked it. Um, Barnabas, you're able to put together between the total documents that the statue you found... Uh, isn't the one he imported. They came to the island to find this one. To pair it with its twin. So that's only one of two. There's another they buried one. that one in the marsh and erected a hinge over it. The original, an entire tabernacle was built on top of it. The tabernacle that you heard about in your original silly history of the island with the church yes. of the island. Um, you have to uh, depower them in tandem, which I mean, at some point, you'll have to split the party to win. Tabernacle of the Old King, yeah. Yep. One is buried in the old church under the hedge, and one's in the tabernacle of the Old King. You'll have to depower them simultaneously. Uh, they were given wealth... In exchange for worship, 
which they were able to use to buy off the mainland, which is why he was able to be uh, in the House of Representatives and in Congress and get everything he wanted for so long. Uh, the regalia was crafted using ancient knowledge that was revealed to them through their arcane rituals that they used to worship this entity. Once the regalia is done, the king possesses the aspect of Haster and actually becomes a uh, earthbound avatar. version of the king in a yellow and avatar, yes. Oh, shit. And only... Uh, there is a ritual you can use to quiet the idols, which is how it's written in the old words, which basically means depower them enough to actually be able to do something to them. However, in order to actually destroy them, you can't just quiet them. Quieting them and then reburying them with the right ritual cast and the right ruins carved around them, right, will protect the island probably for another 200 years until someone else digs that shit up. Mm -hmm. However, permanently make this place safe, you have to destroy them, which means once they're quieted, someone has to don the regalia to get the power of the avatar to destroy the idols. From which the there is no coming avatar. back. Simultaneously. They both have to be depowered. We've met the one. The other one's in the tabernacle, so it's like a church? <laughs> so. Here's the true story of what happened on the island. Uh, he came here to find the twin of the idol. Once he found the twin and built Henge over it, he built his church over the idol he imported. Mm hmm they used both idols to empower him with enough arcane knowledge to create the regalia, which he then donned to make, become the aspect of Pastor. Everyone fell in line and under his sway at that point. When the final ritual was enacted and they began to move the island and all of its inhabitants to Carcos to be with their king forever and for all, uh, two of the cultists who were not totally insane became afraid and managed to escape the island. Almost no one listened to their mad tale because most of their sanity was lost by then. But they were able to convince a single Navy captain, who was the brother-in-law of one of the men, who listened to his wife when she said, please do what they want. Uh, that particular Navy captain was willing to listen because he told them of a tale he once met of another fellow captain of his that had very strange things to say about uh, what he picked up from strange cultists on Forgotten Isles in the Pacific Island. The other captain's name was Obed Marsh. Uh, after hearing what Obed Marsh had to say, this captain was more than willing to accept the story of these people because it was much less crazy than that one. <laughs> uh, so he, using some of what he had heard Obed raving about in the days before he isolated himself in his rich mansion on the mainland somewhere far from here. Uh, went back to the island and made special medallions for the men to wear so that the king would be unable to sense or see them. Be blind, he would be blind to their presence. Uh, the Navy captain then uh, went onto the island and spoke as if he was one of Obed Marsh's sailors saying he knew about Dagon and Mother Hydra the deep mm. ones and all of those things and convinced the king in yellow they were like-minded spirits and they went on board his ship to talk more and share arcane secrets which is when the two men who were hidden by the medallions were able to knock the crown off the king off the head of the king and then murder him in order to break ah. the power of the regalia had and banish the uh banish the uh, the avatar what of course the island legend doesn't tell you is that every single sailor on that boat with the exception of the captain and one of the murderers was driven insane or killed by the avatar before they were able to arrest control from it the wow. captain captain retired shortly after that broke into both body and mind and the other cultists uh no there's no record of what happened to him hmm once all of that was discovered and the people on the mainland were convinced of the truth of the evil Satan worshipping nonsense happening here, they stormed the island as a mob, pitchforks and torches, killed and burned all the other cultists, put them on crosses and burned them like witches and cleansed their island and buried the idols forever. And slowly but surely over the generations through silence and misdirection, the tale was twisted to something one day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. 
They uh, they St. Patrick the shit out of the cult, the the Yellow King cult after the story got out. <laughs> Accurate. Interesting. That's what, All you, right. that's what you learn. Also, because you gave yourself some hard successes and whatnot. Uh, going through the old papers, you're able to figure out which of them are just ravings of mad cultists, and which of the scribblings are actual spells. Roll a d3. <laughs> okay. D3. I rolled oh, a d3. look at that. Three spells. We'll give Jared oh, one because he doesn't have any yet. Uh, so, roll a d20, Jared. D20? Okay. Uh, give me a minute. Seven. Seven, okay. And then roll uh, another d20. Nine. Nine, okay. Nice. Moment. Go ahead and roll your d20. Uh, Barnabas, you can decide who gets the last two. All right. 14. 14, and then roll it again. 12. And seven for Joshua. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one of the two spells that you learned, Barnabas, you can hand out to whoever you want, you don't necessarily learn, is the Chant of Thoth, which I'll put in Discord, but to save time, basically, it makes rolls to figure out arcane rituals or anything intellectual easier. Hmm. Minor sanity loss, spend some magic points, and have a much less of a chance to fail at something important. Useful. Yeah. Say. I get to decide who gets it? Yep. Uh, hmm. <laughs> well, if I have to give it to somebody else, I would probably give it to You can give it to, give it to yourself if you want. But this is you as Eric choosing, not Barnabas choosing. Oh, uh, okay. Um... I would give it to uh, whoever has the second highest library use. I don't know. <laughs> um, you could go to whoever's the most magic points if you wanted. Yeah, I'll go with the one who has most magic points. That makes more sense. List them off. Better use of it. Right. I have no idea what my magic points are. Your ten. power? No, it's not your power. It's a oh, sorry. your power. It's on your yes. sheet, though. Yeah, just to the right of the word Cthulhu on the sheet. Yeah, in the box. It's a blue number. Oh. I lied, I have 14. 14, oh. woo. Wow. Doctor, I had my instinct was right. Okay, I'll give it to the doctor. I have you got, do I uh, even have that Rachel? Hmm? It's based on power. How many do you have, Rachel? Nine. Steve? Ten. Uh, Jared? Eight. Okay. It's because it's derived from power ever, and you had really high power. Uh, no, that's that's so good. Power. Uh, there's a strange whistle in the box, Jared, with instructions written around it. Mm. And you're like, huh, okay. I rub the what do corners. I do with this? So you read the instructions and you're like, oh. This whistle, when blown and the right words are chanted, will cost you 10 magic points. And if you don't have 10, the difference is paid in hit points. And 1d6 sanity. You can summon the thing that keeps kidnapping you and flying off with you as your servant. Mm -hmm. Summon Night Gaunt. Whoa. Summon what? 
Thank God, that's what they're called. The thing that nice. keeps messing with everyone. And the last one. Wow. Probably shouldn't give you that one, but I'm gonna, because that's gonna <laughs> be fun. The last one you rolled was Temporal Rip. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll read you a little of that, because the audience will be amused. Rips the target outside of space-time. To other, the target appears frozen. Surrounded by a jagged darkness through which can be observed the void of space in the dead light of ancient stars long extinguished. <laughs> Basically, you freeze them in a rip in time until you decide to let them go. You can't hurt them in that time, but they can't do anything to you either. When released, the target returns normal, even though they feel sick and weakened for a little while. Uh, there is no memory of what happened while outside of time and space. 1d4 sanity and 6 magic points. Not even a huge cost. Wow. How many magic points? Six. I put oh, it in Discord. Six. And you can decide who gets that one. Holy Give moly. Give that one to someone with low MP. Or keep it. Who should have the power to freeze the supervillain in space time? <laughs> I have an eight. I mean, I can't... I, I, Barnabas would not want to let any of these things go, but... Um, you can keep that one if you I don't want. want to hog. I don't want to hog all the cool magics, though. So, I, I vote for Genevieve. <laughs> Why oh, me? Oh yeah. Because how terrible would it be? She gets so mad at someone for not answering her question. She'd be like, "Fine," and freezes them in oh, space God. time. Oh God! It's that Twilight Zone episode with the kid that has all the powers. That's what that is. Like, mm -hmm. ah, I'm gonna stop you in place until you finish answering my questions. <laughs> oh no. Um, I mean, I'll take it. By the way, how many for the night gone? How many? Ten magic points. I only have eight, so I'll never be able to use it. No, that means you have to pay two hit points and all your magic points oh. to cast it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Genevieve with the, the ability to stop time is way more terrifying. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and give it to uh, <laughs> Genevieve. 100%. Personally? Okay. I will endeavor to not make you regret this. Spontaneous, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, how do how do magic points refresh? Uh, sleep or time. Uh, one an hour or you full night's rest and they all come back. Typically. No. Because I know three spells now. No, oh, I just know two. Oh, nope, I know two. I thought you I yeah, was you could just right? And uh, there is one other in the box that automatically goes to whoever goes through the box. This could be real bad. At the bottom of the box is the one spell that the king in yellow, the previous king, the human, was, was what he used to keep his subjects in line before he gained all his power. He had one ultimate weapon he could use to say, piss me off or I'll cast it. Uh, if you cast this, it will cost you 25 magic points. And 3d10 sanity, basically, you'll kill your character. But what a way to go out, because the spell is Summon Shoggoth. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Just I don't because even of that have evil 25. Laugh. Right, it would kill you. Yeah. You would sacrifice yeah, your life to summon the Shoggoth. <laughs> but what a way to end the story. Jeez. Hell yeah. That, that one goes to the flying security officer. No, that one has to be yours, because you're the one oh, who okay. in the box. Only oh, Barnabas okay. can have that Fair one. Enough. Uh, that would have been <laughs> security <laughs> officer will have time to get a second spell soon. Have no fear. I only um, have one, so I get another one yep. too. <sighs> and having learned the secret of what you need to do, you move into Act Four, the final act of the story. Which means that's where we pause for this evening, and we begin next week by doing your final raises to your characters, not just luck, but abilities too. Nice. Hey. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've like rolled immensely poorly, so I got no <laughs> checks other than the ones I existingly have. Well, that's all the yellow poetry we have time for this week, audience. But have no fear. Act four will carry on the tale of the lurking silence next week. As for other terrifying tales you can enjoy with us, I just realized that's completely the wrong song to do this with. There we go. As for other terrifying tales you can enjoy with us, you can catch me, Eldritch Echoes, online on Tuesday, running 
Scion, The Masks of the Mythos, Session 1, at 9 p.m. on the Onyx Path channel. On Thursday, we have Kim Chi's Grimdark Chronicles playing Strange Aeons in the world of Grim Hollow by Ghostfire Gaming. And then on Saturdays, we have Deviant the Renegades, a story called Radiation Burns. We also have Awesome Adventures on Monday. Tomorrow, Eric is running Cyberpunk Red in the image of Man Made. Wednesday, Sean runs Infinity by Modiphius, uh, Outer Worlds, Inner Demons. And Fridays, Patty runs Scarred Lance, Dracula Genesis. Check website for more. Go to our website, MarvelTales.com. Get links to our Discord to come hang out. Links to our calendar, which you can also find on our Twitch channel, YouTube, for all of our past episodes. Much more than you can find on Twitch. And uh, all the ways you can connect with us on social media. Come check us out. Secrets of Carcosa. To let the viewers know the next show they can catch you in and other cool things outside of Marvel Tales we do online. I've been Eric. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Aron Recluse, and I'll be here tomorrow for Cyberpunk. Uh, hey, my name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, I will be in the Scion Masks of the Mythos. That should be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. I am also in a Scarred Lands game that plays every other Wednesday. Uh, we're going to be playing this Wednesday. Should be fun. Uh, and then I run a Chain Chilling game uh, Thursday nights at uh, 9.30 Eastern. Uh, next session should be a lot of fun because my troll decided let's pick a fight with some technocrats. So, <laughs> oh that can only boy. go well. Uh, yeah, so come check us out Thursday, 9.30. That will be a lot of fun. Uh, hello, I um, am Steve. Um, uh, you can find me on the internet at Voodoo Arcade, all the places. And next you'll see me tomorrow for Cyberpunk, playing our group's uh, Tech Builder Man. Hey everybody, I'm Everett. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Everett, and you can find me also tomorrow night with the magnificent DM, Eric. Hello, name's Jared, um, and you can find me at my new Twitter post, which is at RLJared. It's new, Justine. Um, but you can find me, I'm, I do set, I do Sundays, you can find me playing video games in the morning and then doing this at night, so, yeah. Yep, they play uh, currently uh, Conan, Conan Exiles at 10 a.m. It's the always rotating uh, variety of survival. And now for our Ride or Die viewers, it's vote time. Voting is also open to the audience. We will count any votes you give to any player, one each, until our ending reel stops playing after we stop talking. Any audience votes for favorites will be they, the player you pick will be awarded bonus luck points next session, which is also the reward they can give each other by voting for their favorite person for any reason. So, in the same order, give out your votes. Begin! Uh, you know, I was really gonna give it to Ever for the second week in a row because of all the platitudes, but I I feel really bad because uh, Jared, as character, went through the absolute ringer. Put him through <laughs> so the ringer. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it to Jared. <laughs> uh, I would also like to give it to Jared because that was some really good role play of oh, just uh, your your grunts of anguish and pain. It was it was a real fun treat to watch. Thank you. Thank you. I um sorry. Um I will not vote for Jared to this week. However, I did want to comment about your physical kind of what um, Rachel was saying. Your physical role playing was awesome and that's really dope. Uh so good job on that. But I am gonna go with the platitudes and the overly cheery uh, nonsense words from ever this week. My friends, that is what you call toxic positivity. Um, <laughs> yes. Yep. He's bad. It's bad for you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give mine to Rachel because of a brilliant idea that you had in the game. I can't remember for the life of me what Monster. it is now. To yes. give it, send it on a kill mission against the yeah. attack. That was brilliant. That. Yes. That. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Precisely. Um, I have to give mine. Um, 
I'll have to give mine to, uh, I'd say definitely Rachel with the 10 million freaking questions, but I got to give it to Eric. I got to give some love to Eric because honestly, the whole paint job scene was freaking hilarious. <laughs> I love it. And that's it for us this week, audience. Until next week, just remember, Carcosa always waits for you in your dreams. Good night. Mm-hmm.